It says, though, how can it be the most important game of the year when there's 15 still to be played? Uh, one thing, neither coach had to worry about the emotion of their players for this particular week. Last three games decided in overtime between these two teams. The last five games by three points or less. Chris Kyle ready to kick it off for Los Angeles, and the game is underway. A short kick. It's a spinner, and it's going to hop out of bounds, so the Raiders will have to kick again from their 30. Boys starting up in earnest on the opening kickoff. Last season, the Raiders beat the Denver Broncos twice, as you may well know, and of course, the Raiders went on to win the division with a 12-4 record, while the Denver Broncos finished second, a game behind at 11-5, but Dan Reeves and his team did not go to the playoffs, even with 11 wins. And I think both coaches worry at opening game of the season. Everybody's got butterflies the size of helicopters. Simple little thing like what Gene Lang just did there on that kickoff. He let it go out of bounds as opposed to trying to be a hero in the opening kickoff of the 1986 season. It made the right choice. And both Tom Flores and Dan Reeves in the early stages of this football game are looking for players making the right choice. You see how the series stands dating back to the old American Football League. Opening day is a most important day since the league went to 16 games in 1978. The stats show that the team that wins on opening day has almost twice the chance of making the playoffs as the team that loses on opening day. Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't know that. That's how it breaks down. The other thing between these two teams since 1978 when they played twice in a season, either team has swept. So, uh, this seems to be very important for either team and both teams. Now Chris Barr ready to kick it off again. A high spinning kick again to the far side. This is the Gene Lang looking for the ball. They kicked it away from Vance Johnson, and Gene Lang brings it out across the 25, and he's going to fight his way close to the 30-yard line. The silver and black come a gang tackling, but the Broncos get a good return. And now John Elway, who's had a sensational summer, Starting his fourth year, brings out the Bronco offense. Winder and Lang, the runners, neither a breakaway threat. Vance Johnson is the fastest Bronco, had a phenomenal game against the Rams in the final preseason game, catching 11 balls for 195 yards. Watson's the possession receiver. This offensive line isn't big, but it's underrated. They take good care of Elway. They gave up only 38 sacks last year, and the Broncos throw as much as anybody in the league. Elway, a fastball, man, is wide open. Vance Johnson... He'll be down at the 49-yard line of Los Angeles. They're on the first play from Sturgeon. Here's a late hit call against the Raiders. 21 yards on a catch. Mike Haynes into coverage. That typical Los Angeles Raider bump and run. There's Gene Tunney with a call. Personal foul. You have no idea if you're a Denver Bronco fan how big a reception this is for Vance Johnson. Last year against Hayes and Haynes, the two gifted cornerbacks of the Raiders, they pretty much shut him down. A late hit by McElroy, an additional 15 yards. Bad choice by the Raiders. Excellent pattern run by Johnson. He told me, Trump, before the game, Vance Johnson, he said, I'll admit it, I was intimidated by Los Angeles and had two terrible games against them, but he starts big with a 21-yard reception, followed by personal foul penalty yardage assessed against the Raiders. First down, Denver, 34-yard line of Los Angeles. Opening series of downs for the Denver Broncos. Lang looks for room to run. Here's a penalty marker down. Linesman throw a marker at the snap. This is going to continue throughout the week in the paper. In Denver and Los Angeles, Lester Hayes, personal foul against the Denver Broncos. Lester Hayes and Vance Johnson were really jawing at each other. Watch what happens at the line of scrimmage. And you see Watson on the outside, Johnson on the inside. Johnson goes for the chop block. Left in, five yards, still first down. You can see what Lester Hayes is doing, and he doesn't get called for it, but that's the intimidation factor of the Los Angeles Raider defense. By the way, Jim Tunney just walked up to Lester Hayes and said, don't do that again, son. It'll cost you 15. This is a playoff mentality for why, both of these. Why didn't it cost him 15 there? Uh, because the... He was uh, checking him for Stickham. I don't think he saw it. Clarence K was caught moving. Well, here we go. 
Now first and 15, Denver. Nine guys on the line of scrimmage for the 39-yard line of the Los Angeles Raiders. Johnson going in motion as Elway swings it out to Vance Johnson. The blockers in front. Vance Johnson takes it ahead for a gain of only four yards. He is cut down at the 36-yard line. The defensive front, excellent for Los Angeles. Howie Long, consensus all-pro. Bill Piquel, a rising start, nose tackle, and Sean Jones. There's been some changes in the linebacking. Jerry Robinson starts for the cut. Brad Van Pelt, who went to Cleveland. Mellon and McKenzie in the middle again. Rod Martin again on the outside. Hayes and Haynes, two of the best at cornerback. Stacy Turan in for Mike Davis at strong safety. McElroy again, the free safety for the Raiders. Second down and almost 12, just over 11. Elway takes a look, and he throws an incomplete ball. He was looking at Vance Johnson, running with him stride for stride was Mike Haynes. Look again here, Trump. You can see that Johnson gets a good release off the line of scrimmage here, but he's got to go underneath almost everybody. This ball is just slightly overthrown, but Mike Haynes is right there in coverage with Vance Johnson. He's the big man now for them on the line of scrimmage. Vance Johnson out of the backfield. It's Steve Sewell, number 30. Last week, Broncos able to get Sewell into the offense. He's in the lineup right now with Gerald Wilhite also in the backfield. Raiders on third and long now go to a spread formation. Elway set him the shotgun at the Raider 40. Home run ball. Watson's open. things one Elway with great time and two his athletic ability Steve Sewell was a primary receiver on that pattern and out and up Elway finds Watson in the end zone now Carlos attempting the point after with Kubiak holding it is on the way and good and with 13 24 left to play in the first quarter the Broncos score in their opening drive the big bomb to Watson is the number that does it. Here it is. It's from the shotgun. Stool is to John Elway's right. But Elway likes the matchup that he gets with Watson down here. Watson's not gotten a lot of business in the summer. But he beats. I can't pick up the number on the coverage. Mike, Mike Haynes. Haynes. Mike Haynes so far not had a particularly good first quarter. Now he told us just a few minutes yeah. ago. Did not have much of a summer. He was only healthy, he thought, for two days of practice with a pulled hamstring didn't feel sharp John Elway taking advantage of him good pass protection watch him step up I think that's one of the big changes in John Elway two years ago he goes left or right He's got no chance to find Watson big catch sure handed receiver and the Broncos break out on top the 10-minute ticker, a new feature of NBC Sports. Every 10 minutes, 10 after, 20 after, and at the half hour, right on through the hour, we'll be updating all the scores from around the league, and that's how they stand today. Detroit was an upset winner over the Vikings at Minnesota, and Houston went into Green Bay as an underdog, and the Oilers maybe have it together after all those great drafts they win big. San Francisco blowing out Tampa Bay in the fourth quarter. Atlanta has beaten New Orleans at the Superdome. That is an upset. Atlanta went as an underdog in that game. We'll be updating all the scores in progress and completed every 10 minutes throughout every broadcast on NFL football and NBC Sports in 86. Now, Carlos kicks off for the Denver Broncos. High spinner, downfield to Napoleon McCallum, the rookie from the Naval Academy. And McCallum takes it out across to the 21-yard line. Ensign McCallum... Playing football in his spare time, and he hasn't got much of that. He just got married. He's a full-time Navy man, and he's also playing. It's a he's, tough yeah. year. Offsides, Denver. Will they kick it again? Apparently not. Probably will, won't they? I'd say uh, Mr. McCallum has the all-time part-time job. I would think the Raiders would want the kick over since they only got it back to the 20. They can do that good by downing the ball in the end zone. Here's Jim Tunney, the referee. 
Offside on the kickoff, number 59. Five yards, we kick. I have a feeling these guys are going to be busy today. This is one game we'll be thankful there's striped shirts out there on that field. A very heated rivalry. 13-15 left to play in the first quarter. Here is McCallum, who set an NCAA record for all-purpose yardage. At the Naval Academy, averaged over 208 yards a game in all-purpose yardage, rushing, receiving, and returning kicks. He's big, 6'2", 218 pounds, a big strider. The Raiders didn't think they'd get him until after his five-year Naval commitment. I'm sure you've heard about that. The Navy said, we want, we want you in uniform. He's a poster boy for him. There's no question about that. You can be all you want to be. <laughs> well, they, they said, Trump, that the Raider players were telling him it's like the crowd noise at an Army-Navy game when you come to Denver, except nobody cheers for Navy. <laughs> Here's the big hit downfield. This time, Stefan Adams takes the ball. He's a sprinter across the 20. He's got more to the 25 and the 28-yard line. Coming down on special teams was Dennison to lead the way. Also Ken Bell, and here comes Mark Wilson, number six, to lead the offense. Marcus Allen coming off an MVP year in the NFL. Led the league in rushing, first Raider ever to do that. Hester and Williams, great speed at the flanks. Christensen, one of the very best at tight end. As usual, a huge offensive line. Most by really coming out. The Raiders think he's all pro quality. Hawkins, nothing. Now, while we have a moment with the uh, Broncos up 7 0, let's go to NFL 86 and Bob Costas. Bob? Right back here at Denver now, the Raiders are set to go. He's second down in nine. High back is Marcus Allen. You, Christensen went down, looked like he was tripped. Official right there looking at it said, no, it's an incomplete pass. Third down and nine and the long yardage defense comes in for Denver. Bronco pass rush, keyed around Rulon Jones, the veteran nose tackle Reuben Carter. Andre Townsend, the other starting defensive end. Now new people have come in. Mecklenburg made all pro last year. Might have been the best linebacker in the league the way he graded out. Ricky Hundley, a new starter inside linebacker. Safeties are veteran in Smith and Foley. So is cornerback Louis Wright. Mike Carden, another good cover. Denver very sound defensively, as always, under Joel Collier. Raiders trailing first quarter, 7-0. All out rush coming. Wilson gets some time, he's running out of it. And Townsend, Saxon, Andre Townsend, a third-year defensive end from Mississippi. Don, you mentioned the genius of Joe Collier. That particular time, the Denver Broncos had seven defensive backs in the ballgame. They were able to double, double every receiver out there. Wilson had nobody to throw it to. Townsend, man-on-man -man with Henry Lawrence from the left side of the screen. You'll see he's got nobody to throw to. That's a coverage sack. So the Bronco defense overwhelms the Raiders on L.A.'s first possession, and now Ray Guy ready to punt the ball. Gerald Wilhite is back. Broncos could come out of this with good field position. Wilhite will run it back from his 38. 40, 40, back to the 44-yard line. Good coverage by the Raiders. 41-yard punt, a five-yard return by Gerald Wilhite. Eleven forty-six to play in the first quarter as Gerald Wilhite, a former number one draft choice of Denver, comes off the field. We're going to show you one of the things that I think Denver does very well with a scrambling quarterback in John Elway here in just a minute with our telestrator. Elway stands in and he throws downfield and a penalty marker comes in. It's going to be on Lester Hayes, who again was unable to cover Vance Johnson. That's holding. Johnson is very, very fast. Watch him break to the inside. Now watch this move back to the outside and Lester's left hand. Well, that's holding on both of them. 
That's holding on both of them. They're going to call it on Vance Johnson pulling himself away from Lester Hayes. Lester had a good preseason. Oh-ho! So the call goes against the orange, and it was indeed Vance Johnson holding. Lester Hayes took his weight down about 15 pounds in the offseason and had three preseason game interceptions. Good, yes. I <laughs> good idea, but he just gets caught. That's a trick that wide receivers learn, but you've got to be a little more of an actor at it than that. 49ers won big at Tampa Bay 31-7 on opening day. We're in the first quarter, and now Elway and company with a tough set, first and 20 against the big pass rush of the Raiders. Howie Long coming hard, blocked well by Stutter. Here's a penalty marker down as Winder takes the ball across the Bronco 40-yard line. Out to the 43. And a marker down at the line and a holding call against Denver. I think it's going to be on Ken Lanier. That's one thing about this Los Angeles Raider defensive line, Don. Great deal of conversation about sacks, but they also draw penalties. Holding, 76, 10 yards, still first down. That is Ken Lanier. Actually, though, I don't think coaches mind that so much. As big a part of the franchise as John Elway is, you can't turn someone like Piquel or Howie Long or Sean Jones just flat loose on John Elway. Raiders trailing 7-0. The Raiders have won their last four regular season openers. Now Elway on first and forever. He's got first and 30. Swing pass to Wilhite. He'll get some out to the 30. And it's going to bring up second down in about 22. Rod Martin came across to make the stop on Gerald Wilhite. On the opening series, the Broncos went down the field behind the passing of John Elway, first play from scrimmage, he hit Vance Johnson for 21 yards. Subsequently, threw into the end zone from 35 yards out. Touchdown to Watson. And it's a 7-0 game, Denver. All they've done is throw the ball, though. Eventually, they're going to yeah. have to run to control the line of scrimmage here. Sean Jones left a little early. I told you those guys in the striped shirts are they're going to be a godsend today. These guys don't like each other. There's no pretense about that. None whatsoever. Of course, it's a plus, too, that they know each other so well. False start. Number 63. Five yards. That's Cooper. We might not be done here after four quarters of play. The last three meetings of Denver and the Raiders has gone to overtime. Chris Barr ended both games last year with field goals. Victories for Los Angeles. That's Rulon Jones on the sideline. He got hit in the ribs and he's putting on a rib, rib cage cover. Everybody wants to play in this game. Second and 29 with the ball's position now for Denver. Broncos lead first quarter 7-0. Hitch to Sewell. Again, good Raider defense. Linebacker Jeff Barnes, 56, came across and made the stop along with Sam Seal. Now, let's take a look. The Cleveland Browns are closing things up at Soldier Field in Chicago. Time left, and they're very close to the world champion Bears. And finals in. We'll be updating all the scores every 10 minutes. The 10-minute ticker on NBC Sports. 10 minutes to play, and the clock running in the first quarter here at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Watson, who caught the touchdown pass, now goes wide to the left. Lance Johnson's at the top of your screen in the slot to the left. Elway takes a look. Bang! John Elway hit hard. Sean Jones, Howie Long come thumping in along with Piquel, the nose tackle. Raiders, as they say, don't rush the quarterback. They attack him. The thing they like, too, is you got everybody singled up there on the offensive line. Watch 71, Piquel. A good move by Cooper and through Brian. He actually beats two guys and gets a good, solid hit on John Elway. That's one of the things... That has always been a trademark of the Raiders. Attack the pocket, as you said. Now Napoleon McCallum is back at his 35. Jack Wheel, there's McCallum, ready to punt the ball for Denver. Free agent from Wyoming. Oh. 
Good punt by Weir. McCallum waits. It is 35. Here he comes. To the 40. To the 45, and he's cut down there. Napoleon McCallum with a nine-yard return after a 47-yard punt. Denver continues to lead 7-0. Now to NFL 86, here's Bob Costas. All right, Don, let's check the debut of Jim Kelly. Not a bad start. He takes the Bills in their first possession, 53 yards in nine plays, caps it off with a one-yarder to Greg Bell for the touchdown, and on the drive, Mr. Kelly was three for three. Back to Don and Trump. So, Jim Kelly, his impact thing fell quickly in Buffalo. There have been some upsets today, more to follow in, no doubt, as right now the Raiders trailing 7-0 go first and 10. Marcus doesn't have the ball yet. Free ball, good defense. Coming up to make the play, Mike Harden has converged. Free safety, Steve Foley was also on the play as Wilson was going to Jesse Hester. And I tell you, one of the things that the Raiders are going to have to contend with all day long is just simply identifying who is on the defensive line of scrimmage. On that particular snap, Broncos had five guys, guys down, one dropped out, Mecklenburg, who was lined up as a linebacker, blitzed. There it is. They did 12 times last year, but the Raiders have not won a postseason game since after the 83 season. And that crowd tradition is smarting from consecutive losses the past two years in the opening playoff game. Wilson throws. Hester can't hold it at the 47-yard line. One interesting aspect of the Raiders, Trump, is the veterans they cut. About 11 or 12 veterans either retired or were waived. And Raiders were pointing out that there's 125 years of experience that left the team. They've gone with a lot younger people. Al Davis said before the game, I don't know if we're ready yet this early to come into Denver, but we have to be. Those names, Cliff Branch, Lyle Alzado, Dave Dalby, all veterans, all leaders. There's a veteran, too. Jim Plunkett standing right behind Tom Flores. Wilson's not had much time so far in this first quarter. One, two, three, four. Another seven defensive back set, Don. Wilson stands in, throws, and it looks completed to Hester. No, they ruled he did not have possession of the ball. And so the Raiders again go three downs and out on offense, and they'll have to punt the ball. They've given him a different look on every single snap. Now watch Wilson look around the field. He's looking to his right, to his left, across the middle. I got to throw underneath, he says. 49, Dennis Smith making the tackle, playing this game with a broken collarbone. I want him in my foxhole. I do. <laughs> I really do. He actually does have a fractured bone in his shoulder. It's not the clavicle. It's a, up a smaller bone, but still it's a broken bone. He's playing with it. Ray Guy hits a long punt downfield. Will Height will take the ball at his 12. Three ball. I don't know. Raiders had it for a moment. Looked like Denver. The Raiders come up with the ball. So the first turnover goes to Los Angeles. 16-yard return, but an empty ba basket when he got there. And so Stephon Adams coming up with the ball, and the Raiders go on offense in the Denver end. Last week. Broncos had all kinds of turnovers. Last year, they had just eight fumbles lost, which led the NFL. That was a pretty strong hit, but Stephon Adams underneath the pile, they're able to get his hands on it. And now Raiders with great field position here. Let's see if we see Marcus Allen here in this series. Marcus Allen. First carry, and Marcus Allen fighting hard gets inside the 25-yard line. This is one guy the Denver Broncos have to stop. In two games last year, gained over 300 yards. That's key on Carl Mecklenburg, 77, overruns the play a little bit. Good block by Kurt Marsh. And Allen, even though he's tall and lanky, a very powerful running back. Here's Mr. Mecklenburg, who will play anywhere but strong safety and weak safety for the Denver Broncos. Raiders trailing 7-0 first quarter, but now trying to capitalize after the fumble recovery, and Marcus Allen turns the corner. Free ball. Raiders get it. Got about four extra yards as Allen was hit hard from behind, but Mike Harden couldn't get to the ball before it went out. Now we got a rule change. And the rule change will be that the ball goes back to the spot where Marcus Allen fumbled it. It used to be that you could gain yards on the fumble, but this goes back. Hundley misses the tackle. 
That's Foley making the hit only on the cleanup at the point where he fumbles it. That's where the ball is placed. Third down and about four, maybe five. Rule change in the NFL this year. So now third down comes up. Mark Wilson has thrown the ball four times. He has yet to complete a pass. 7.53 to go first quarter. Hawkins and Allen, the setbacks for the Raiders. Marcus Allen heading for the end zone. He's going in. 24 yards and a touchdown as the Raiders come back quickly. Get the fumble recovery and go in. Wilson's first completion for a touchdown. The coverage was by Mecklenburg, and as gifted an athlete as Carl Mecklenburg is, he can't keep up with Marcus Allen. He just can't. Allen ran a very simple pattern out of the offensive backfield. Just a circle route. Made a good move to the outside. Mecklenburg couldn't keep up. Hey, what a great athlete this kid is. He's now scored 59 career touchdowns in 58 career NFL games. Coming off an MVP season, the football writers wrote him the player of the year as he rushed for almost 1,800 yards. We'll watch this from behind the defense. Allen will come from the left of the picture. There's Christensen, 46, clearing out. Look at the distance. Just an excellent move by Marcus Allen. And into the end zone. He had on a much better conditioned athlete even than a season ago with his new off-season conditioning program. He's involved in the martial arts. Feels it's made him stronger, quicker, more flexible. Let's see if we can see the move. No, it's going to be to the right of the picture. You can't really see the move he puts on Mecklenburg. But when you run a five-yard pattern and you got a three-yard cushion, you know you <laughs> laid a good move on the guy. So Wilson to Marcus Allen takes a lot of the enthusiasm out of sold-out Mile High Stadium, a stadium that incidentally is now in the beginning its 17th consecutive year of sellouts. Dan Reeves, the winningest coach in Bronco history in his sixth season as the head man at Denver. I asked him before the game how he felt about so many people picking Denver as the team that's going to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. Well, he said, we are a good team. He said, I don't know if we're that good. He said, we didn't even win a division last year, but they did come just one game away. Well, they are playing in the toughest division in the NFL. Collectively, the teams in the AFC West last year, 43 and 35. And none of the teams in the AFC West this year have easy schedules. Now they've got to go and play a lot of NFC East teams. Elway is five of six throwing the ball for 71 yards and a touchdown. Gene Lang, they've ticked away from Vance Johnson, but Lang does nicely, and there's also a penalty marker down at the Raider end. Somebody might have been across the line early before the ball was hit. Trey Junkin is the man who came down to make the tackle, but in all probability, if it's against the Broncos or against the Raiders, Denver will take the ball where they got it. Sure. My philosophy is always make them run that 40 or 45 or 50-yard sprint again. Take your chances. Tire them out a little bit. Most teams now... Off side on the kickoff, number 94. We kick five yards. Now the 10-minute ticker, a look at the scoreboard on opening day 1986. Attention, please. John it just ended. Chicago Bears beat the Cleveland Browns in an unusually high-scoring game for a strong defensive team. Both are really good defensively. Game's in progress. The Jets have come back to tie up Buffalo. This game, of course, tied. San Diego out in front, 10-0 over the Dolphins. New England with a 3-0 lead on the Colts. Kansas City out to a 7-0 advantage on the Bengals and the Steelers, and Seattle scoreless at the Kingdom. Well, as I was mentioning, you always make them kick the ball off again, mainly because you might find some guys who are starting on the defense who, after two 50-yard sprints, then you try to run a pattern against those guys. So if you can get them winded a little bit, because this is the visiting team up in this altitude, I don't think physically it makes much difference, but psychologically it might. It's a slight advantage, but in a game where two teams are so close, it might make the difference. Cattle to the big winners here. Denver with 24 wins the last two seasons. They were 13 and 3 two years ago, then 11 and 5, and the Raiders, of course, are coming in as defending AFC West champions. Hard hit ball by Chris Barr. Held down the ball in the end zone, and the Broncos will now start from their 20 in this tie game 7-7 with 7.15 to play in the first quarter. <laughs> G. 
John Elway off to a hot start. He's been throwing the ball very well. Five of six. Good for 71 yards and a touchdown. He was sacked very hard, though, once in the first quarter. Bounced right up. John Elway, not without injury problems. He's had arthroscopic knee surgery after the past two seasons, but very minor surgery, and he might be the best running quarterback in the National Football League. He led the AFC quarterbacks in rushing a year ago. This is the first run of the game for the Denver Broncos. They've been all passes, and Gerald Wilhite takes it out to the 26-yard line. He got six. Matt Millen and Van McElroy knocked him down. You'll see the Denver Broncos do an awful lot of changing of personnel offensively. It seems that when Sewell and with Wilhite come into the ball game. We'd like to welcome all of you who've been watching the Chicago Bears and the Cleveland Browns in that high-scoring game at Soldier Field. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Where the Broncos scored first in a 35-yard touchdown pass by Elway, but the Raiders came right back. Marcus Allen on the receiving end of a touchdown throw. It's a 7-7 game in the first quarter. Elway throwing long for Will Height. Intercepted by Mark Haynes. So Mike Haynes, the guy who's been to the Pro Bowl eight of his ten years, now he really was out of bounds, did not have possession of the ball. Well, that's a chance he played to take. This early in the ball game, you throw it back across the field. Will Height was open, but Haynes was not fooled. Same roll right. It's to Will Height all the way. That's one of the few times I think I've ever seen the Los Angeles Raiders in something other than man to man. And that's right. Ball bobbled. Second foot did not come down. Long incompletion. Third and about three. So Elway sets in the shotgun. Watson and Vance Johnson are to the left, to the top of your screen. Will Hoyt coming out of the backfield, can't hold on, and now Howie Long takes a swing at an offensive line <laughs> for the Billy Broncos. <laughs> Long, Long can not only... Uh, he never stop. He, he can not only beat him with a pass rush, but he can turn the phrase on him, too. Billy Bryan's been in the middle of some stuff, a very strong center for the Denver Broncos. Now the Raider defense slows the Denver passing game, and Napoleon McCallum is back again to return the punt. Standing at his 32. There's Jack Wheel ready to punt the ball for Denver. Six twenty-four to play in the first quarter, and the game is tied. Well hit ball by the free agent Jack Wheel. McCallum from his 22. Penalty markers down at the 35. Might have been a clip as McCallum rips one up the middle for a big gain around the return. A 20-yard return after a 52-yard punt. I think we're going to have a clip or a blocking in the back. An illegal push. Something along those lines against the Raiders. It'll go from the spot of the foul. I think they're going to call it on Jamie Kimmel, number 59 of the Los Angeles Raiders. A lot of fellows on the ship cheering. The SS Pelalu. Pelalu. 3,000 men on that ship. Number it's not 59 a boat. on the return. 10 yards. First down. It's not a floor either, right? No, it's a deck. Former Navy man Bob Trumpy. We'll be back with the score tied 7-7. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Mile High Stadium. Broncos starting fast, getting the first touchdown, a 7-0 lead. Now the Raider defense has come into play a lot more. Don, the thing that surprised me is neither team has run the ball. I mean, uh, the Denver Broncos, I think, have one rush. The Raiders have one rush. That was Hawkins, the first play of the game. And the rest has been throwing the ball. Both these teams, Denver has to run. The Los Angeles Raiders certainly can run, but they're going with a pass. Raiders set to go. First down and 10 at their 25-yard line. Swing. Marcus Allen in open field. And he gets to the 31-yard line. Last time he had the ball, you remember, he finished the play. A 24-yarder all told into the end zone for the tying touchdown. 
Uh, Jim Ryan made the tackle, but you're going to see 52 Ken Woodard just to the right of your screen drop out. You see him right there in front of you? He's got the coverage on Marcus Allen. He drops way off there. That allows Wilson the opportunity to get the ball to Marcus Allen and a two-yard completion to Marcus Allen. He can turn into a seven-yard game. Woodard's got to stay tighter than that. Marcus Allen in his fifth year, the former Heisman Trophy winner from Southern California, and now he's starting to get a lot of work, and Allen dives across the 30. Had a career game in one of the wins over the Broncos last season when he gained 173 yards and had a 61-yard touchdown run in that game. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Four fifty-nine to play, clock running first quarter. Denver seven, Los Angeles Raiders seven. Don Mosbar in for the now retired Dave Dalby at center. A huge end-to-end -end offensive line of the Los Angeles Raiders, and now there's a timeout called for, so we'll be back after Mark Wilson gets some counsel. The rest of the scoreboard will be updating all the scores every 10 minutes on NBC Sports. Right now, with the Raiders and the Broncos tied at 7-7, here's a third down throw by Wilson. Man is open. Doki Williams, the sprinter from UCLA. They get him before he goes the distance, but Doki Williams has the Raiders down close again. 54 yards, a straight fly, just beat the corner. Don, we'll watch on the telestrator what happens here. Let's identify some people. You got Williams coming in motion. Look at the defensive backs that you can see. One, two, three, and it's a total zone. What happens is Williams comes in here in motion and then back out outside and he gets lost in the shuffle. He's wide open for Mark Wilson to find him down the field. Watch what happens. There you see Williams. Now he goes back outside. He's lost. It looks like it looks like Dennis Smith got scraped off. He had the coverage. Big play, Los Angeles Raiders. So the Raiders with a 54-yard gainer. Now down as Mark Wilson has to get it away. He does, and it's cut by Christensen, and he's in. And the Raiders take the lead 13-7. to Todd Christensen, the all-pro tight end, who has caught 80 or more passes the last three years, makes his first reception of 86, a big one. And the Raiders down at the outset, 7-0 now. Look for a 14-7 lead. The extra point getting up. Does a great job from, be, from behind the offense. There's Rick Hundley, 98, trying to reach for it. Christensen grabs that ball. That's a good hard hit by Louis Wright, but Christensen able to get in the end zone. Big play again by the Raiders. That's two big plays in a row, and they're on the board. Here's Chris Barrod now to try the point after for Los Angeles. It's on the way and good. And so with 4.29 to go in the first quarter, the proud Raiders come back quickly after trailing 7-0. They have a 14-7 lead. Raider kickoff in a moment. 123 pounds did Todd Christensen to break the final crust as Wilson pleased at the start. And well, he should be after the Raiders fell behind 7-0. Now Barr will kick off. They've been kicking it away from the sprinter, Vance Johnson. Now they're kicking a bet to the near side. They switch return men. And again, it goes to Gene Lang, though, because Barr looked at him and right to him. There's a big league stick by Strahan, the running back from Boston College, down on special teams to stuff Gene Lang and a penalty marker down. This Denver Bronco team is not a team with a lot of rookies. Kind of surprising we've had that many penalties on both ball clubs of leaving early on a punt, offsides on a kickoff, and illegal blocks behind the back. Illegal block, number 88, half the distance of the goal line, first down. It's interesting when the Denver Broncos have beaten the Raiders, they've had some success running the ball. They've got to establish some run because Elway's passing has been slowed since the beginning drive. When he went right through Los Angeles last year, passing was two-thirds of the Denver offense. No backs in the regular season got 100 yards against the Raiders. They're tough to run against. But Denver's going to have to start getting some. Now they try with Sammy Winder. He gets nothing. Shut down at the 10. Interesting choice. They call a draw play on first and 10 at their own 10-yard line. 
Sean Jones makes the tackle. Howie Long comes up with the football. See, they set up for a draw, apparently thinking because they pass so much that the Los Angeles Raiders are going to think pass all the way. What's going to happen, Don, is if they don't begin to run the ball effectively, the Raiders are going to line, line up nine guys at the line of scrimmage and dare you to throw the football. Right. They got big people up front now. Townsend's in the game to pass rush. Going with four down linemen. Cornerbacks up tight. Here's Elway with a sprint out. Loops the ball. It's tipped away. Nicely done by Townsend, the defensive end, 93. Got a finger on the ball. And so the Broncos, who started fast now, find themselves in trouble with third down and nine coming up. They don't convert here. They're going to give the Raiders field position on a punt. And with 65 sacks last year by the Los Angeles Raiders, if you're Dan Reeves, you don't want your team in an awful lot of third down and nine situations. Rulon Jones, the fine defensive and the pro bowler for the Denver Broncos, has been taken to the locker room for x-rays. Banged up some ribs early in the game. 3.31 to play in the first quarter. It's 14 to 7 Raiders. That's on the offense. That's Mark Cooper, number 63. A new starter in for the veteran Paul Howard at right guard. He's uh, across from Pickell, who led the Raiders in sacks last year. All he's trying for is just a little edge, but from an up position, that's almost senseless. I mean, you're right where you want to start pass protection. There's no reason to break out. Raiders pin those ears back, and here they come, snorting fire. Third down and 14, and Elway will be throwing from his end zone, if he can. Whoa. That's a safety. Yep, safety it is. There's no way Elway can win that. He either steps on the back line, or if he has an intentional grounding to avoid a sack, both are safeties, two points. Two points, Raiders. And the Broncos, watch the move on 63. Watch long. Throws, absolutely throws Mark Cooper out of the way. Towns in there, too. It's not working for the Denver Broncos. America, this is the... In the defense, Townsend out here makes the sack, folks, but watch this body slam. This is Howie Long on Mark Cooper. Watch this arm. Ooh, get out of here. Right in Elway's face. And here's the ruling. He either steps on the back line. If so, that's a safety. And intentionally grounding the ball in the end zone is also a safety. Two points for the Raiders, and Denver must punt. So it was a stadium and celebration early in this game after the Broncos scored the first time they had the ball has now become deafening in its silence as the Raiders have come back to take a 16 to 7 lead. The Broncos unable to run against Los Angeles and the Raider pass rush has begun to dominate this game. Napoleon McCallum the rookie from the Naval Academy ready to return the kickoff. Now the free kick. Jack Wheel, the punter's in. You have the option of placing the ball or punting it on the free kick after a safety. And here's the well-hit ball downfield of the 15-yard line. McCallum, he's big, takes on tacklers and gets to the 38-yard line. As we look at the scoreboard on the 10-minute ticker. Jets and Buffalo still tied. Marino's just thrown a touchdown pass. Miami gets a first score after trailing 17-0 at San Diego. New England starting fast. Siason just threw a touchdown pass to Collinsworth for the Bengals. They've tied Kansas City. Pittsburgh and Seattle hitting people and not scoring at the Kingdom. Mark Wilson with two touchdown calls for the Raiders. Comes up. The Denver fans start up. Marcus Allen, Allen runs ahead for six yards. He gets out to the 43-yard line. Art McNally, the head of NFL officials, is here, and the official call on the safety from down on the field was that John Elway's foot hit the back line in automatic safety. It was not intentional grounding. Either way, it was two points for the Raiders in the subsequent free kick possession. Second down and about four. Mecklenburg gets the, to the quarterback, but just a moment late. 
The referee, Jim Tunney, right on top of quarterback Mark Wilson. The number one assignment of a National Football League referee, no matter what else you hear, is to protect the quarterback. And you see number one assignment. And you see 77, Carl Mecklenburg lines up in a variety of positions. That time, a stand-up pass rusher. Last year, Joe Collier was just drawing in the dirt things for, for Mecklenburg to do. This summer in training camp, they designed a whole series of things for him to do. You'll find him everywhere on that defensive line. Third down and just under five for the first down. They lead 16-7 late in the first quarter. Throw and a strike. Todd Christensen's ahead for a Raider first down to the 44-yard line of Denver. 12-yard gain. Christensen, who the last three years has caught 82, 80, and 92 passes. You see his average. Gets ahead for first. He hand fights those defensive backs and gets rid of them. He wanted to make sure you knew how much he weighed, too, didn't he? Yeah, we said he weighed 245 last year. He said that was because of the rib pads. I look like I weighed 245. Weighs 223 and is a downfield receiver. That big body, when he turns around, those two defensive backs in zone coverage couldn't go over him without interference. Easy 12-yard pickup. First down Raiders inside the 45-yard line of the Broncos. Marcus Allen breaks the crust and rockets down to the 33-yard line. He gets 11 and a first down for the Raiders. Todd Christensen almost made the tackle there. New player for the Denver Broncos defense, 98, Rick Hundley. You see him going there. Christensen gets a block on him, but watch what happens. Christensen almost puts Marcus Allen to the ground. Hundley there, not a plus on the play. That has to be graded a minus by Joe Collier. Henry Lawrence, the right tackle. Mickey Marvin, the right guard. Don Mostar, the center, blowing people out. Raiders winning at the line of scrimmage on offense. Allen. Bronco defense comes up to shut him down at the 31-yard line. Don, you notice that the Los Angeles Raiders, when they run, they run behind Marvin and Lawrence to the right, and they're running at Carter, 68, 75, Rulon Jones, and 98, Rick Hundley. I don't blame them for running behind Marvin and Lawrence. I'm kind of surprised that Rulon Jones and Hundley have not done a better job stopping the run. I with Peyton, nine straight regular season games, 100 or more yards. He's going for a tenth today. Big rush, long ball. Good coverage by the Denver Broncos. Louis Wright, five times a pro bowler, trying to cover and doing it well against Doki Williams. Walk in the dog, they call it. Step for step by Witham. Denver that time with the blitz. Allen, most valuable player in the league last year. All those rushing yards. Put on a spectacular block on Carl Mecklenburg that time. But he can certainly do his job, whether it's run, catch, or block. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. 21 seconds to go first quarter. Marcus Allen again hits off the right side. And again, his offensive line gives him the thrust he needs to get ahead for yards, and it brings up now fourth down and about four. Number 46 for the Los Angeles Raiders, Todd Christensen, primarily a pass receiver, but when asked to, can get the job done blocking. Basically, all you got to do is get in their way. And Christensen, Christensen done a pretty good job as the first quarter ends. Mark Wilson, after missing his first four throws, hit his next four, two for touchdowns. The following is sponsored by the U.S. Army. No words could repair this running back shattered knee. Please don't give me your words of wisdom or your advice about what I should do, or what I shouldn't do. The achievers, those who face adversity and refuse to fail. Brought to you by... First quarter stats, the Denver Broncos with just seven yards rushing. F bottom line numbers, though, a dominance for the Raiders after they fell behind 7-0. They now lead this game 16-7. Now we have a moment. Let's go to NFL 86 in New York. Bob? Don, San Diego jumped in front of Miami 17-0 at the end of one in San Diego. Then Dan Marino got it going. He fires this one 22 yards to Mark Clayton for the touchdown. So the Dolphins are back in business. They trail by 10 in the second. 
Thank you, Bob. As right now, we have a 16-7 count on the board at the outset of the second quarter here at the Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. 121 consecutive sellouts. Chris Barr ready to kick the ball, find the long field goal. It'll be a 43-yarder. Did not have good success long range last season. But he wins a lot of games when it comes down to the final kick. This time he drills it, puts the hook on it just right. Just like the Raiders like it, and they extend their lead to 19 to 7. We'll be back with the Los Angeles kickoff after this. Big boys from Los Angeles have been getting it done. They have scored on their last three possessions plus a safety. The Raiders leading 19-7. As we look at the 10-minute ticker, Jets and Buffalo still tied. San Diego continues to hold to a 10-point lead on Miami. New England now the 10-3 lead over Indianapolis. Colts get a field goal. And the other two scores have not changed since our last ticker look. Right now, Chris Barr hits a high spinning kickoff downfield. Here comes Vance Johnson. He finally gets a kickoff. The super fast Denver Bronco crosses the 20. Dives out to the 22-yard line. Running back at University of Arizona, drafted in the second round a season ago. On last replay we showed was Mark Cooper being manhandled by Howie Long. Now Paul Howard, number 60, is in at right guard for the Denver Broncos. Big boys from California. Not giving up a thing on defense, and Elway has to find a way to get the big play. They're going with a one-back set. They're going to be throwing. Raiders coming up to meet it. Linebackers up tight. Elway gets time, swings it out to Sammy Winder. Loses Mike Haynes for the moment, and Winder gets ahead for maybe seven yards. I don't know if you can just drop back every time and beat the Raiders when you're this far behind. I don't believe you can. Well, let's watch the protection. Paul Howard, the veteran on that offensive line, he does a good job handling Howie Long. I have a feeling he's going to be in there for the rest of the day. His uniform is going to get dirty. <laughs> Raider defensive front three, Long from Villanova. They dropped football recently, pick it up again. Pickell's from Rutgers. Jones is from Northeastern. Not big name football schools, but super big name players. Here's a long ball downfield. A man goes down going for the ball. Going for the ball was the tight end Clarence K, but there's no penalty marker down. Stacy Turan was the man in coverage. They got their feet tangled up. In case you're wondering if the replay official will handle that, the answer is no. They'll have nothing to do with it. There's nothing called by the officials. The replay official will not get involved. And of course, if both players are looking back at the quarterback, that's that rule change from last year. You do have a lot more what they refer to in the NFL as incidental contact. There it is. Elway needs three. Lead swing. Well thrown ball to Will Hunt. He's got the first down in 20 miles. He crosses midfield and gets to the 49-yard line of Los Angeles. 21-yard gain, a big block, block by center Billy Bryan. Dan McElroy finally makes the tackle. Don, what the Broncos are doing is just using their running backs. You saw Will Height there start right, come back left. Bryan does make an excellent block. Will Height carrying that ball rather dangerously. With 21 yards and a first down. So the Broncos finally break a big play. They've not had one in some time. Trailing 19 to 7 early in the second quarter. Pitch back to Winder on first down. He runs hard and gets four. Down to the 45-yard line. Sean Jones knocked him down. A humongous defensive end at 6'7, 280. In just his third year. This young man, you got to give him a tip of the cap. Last year he gained 700 yards rushing. While having a, an arthroscope on his knee and an appendectomy. And we know that with Dennis Smith playing with a broken collarbone today, and Sammy Winder coming back and contributing to the Broncos last year, Broncos got some tough kids out there. They better today. Now it's second down and six for the Broncos. Pass. Sewell takes a look. Turns the corner on Turan, who gets him and gets ahead for maybe a yard or two. And now a penalty marker comes in after the play. Might be a late hit. Reggie McKenzie. Yeah, it looked to me like Sewell was going to throw that ball. 
Did to me too, yeah. When he took yeah, it. He can throw it. It's against the Raiders. Late hit. Tom Flores looking on. Watch when he gets this ball on the pitch. He's looking upfield. Like a clip too on. Personal foul. Unnecessary. Rod Martin was taken out. 54. 15 yards. But the call goes against the Raiders. Down to the 28-yard line. Denver needs a score here. They'll be right back in it. They're down 19-7 at the moment. Penalty on Reggie McKenzie. Late hit. Officials trying to keep control of this football game. A well-spent 11th round draft choice a year ago, Reggie McKenzie. Raiders are going to lose their top two picks this year for the season. Kowski and Cochran, both with back problems, need surgery. Winder. Gary Robinson hems him in, and Rod Martin finishes him off. Veteran from UCLA, Jerry Robinson coming from the left outside. Rod Martin from Southern California from the right outside, and they close him down for a loss. Along with that stat, something you said earlier, Don, the Raiders did not allow any running back to gain 100 yards rushing last year. That's a heck of an accomplishment. Yeah, James regular season. That's a heck of an accomplishment. It is unseasonably cool in the Mile High City. Temperature in the 50s today, and now there seems to be a distinct threat of rain. It's become an overcast day. As the Broncos come up with second down and John Elway's right arm has to get him 17 here. Or some of that anyway. Elway eludes the rush, gets the ball away to Johnson. Tries to put on a hook move and he's cut down at the 23-yard line. It'll bring up third and about seven. Elway's quick feet saved him from the pass rush and then Vance Johnson got the ball. Does an excellent job of getting away from Sammy Seal. Once again, he uses that move. And you can see these receivers, when John Elway rolls left, the receivers go with him. Something that all coaches teach receivers so that there is someone for the quarterback to throw to. Elway did an excellent job of avoiding the rush on that particular play, too. Greg Townsend was all over him. Vance Johnson to the near side, lower portion of your screen on this third and sixth play. He's against Mike Haynes. To Sewell, he's looking to throw. First time he's ever caught one in the NFL. I think so. Not particularly well thrown by Sewell. Don, the point to make is, though, it's six points, but that's a trick play. You only got about four of those a game in the book. You can't come with many more. We're just like they threw it up, and here is the extra point by Kyrus, and the Broncos are back in the game. It's 19 to 14 with 11.57 to play in the first half. That's happening at Denver, and we'll be back. Broncos just went deep into their bag of trips and came up with a winner. Well, trick plays do two things for you. One, they win your games. Two, they get you back in the games. Look at the guy in coverage. 99, Sean Jones, a defensive end. But you got to establish something. That's the last page of the playbook. As we look at the 10-minute ticker, San Diego gets another touchdown against Miami. And Seattle's on the board at the Kingdom with a 6-0 lead on the Steelers. Now Rich Carlos, ready to kick it off, hits a high spinning kick. Von Adams will run it back. Oh, he gets hit and hard. Coming downfield to stick him was Ken Woodard, a linebacker. And the Raiders go on offense there. Once 19-7 lead, now cut to five. Here are the finals from earlier. Chicago Bears in a shootout with the Cleveland Browns at Soldier Field. Bears a winner. Buddy Ryan's debut for Philadelphia. Not a happy one at Washington. Houston, an underdog, blew out the Packers at Green Bay. And Detroit upset the Vikings at Minneapolis. The foot thunder starts again. A couple of more finals. Atlanta, an upset winner at New Orleans. And the 49ers took apart the Buccaneers. Broncos defense thinking turnover right here, Don. Thinking turnover. 
Cup to call signals in tense noise as the handoff goes to Marcus Allen. He breaks free for the moment. And that is knocked down after a gain of a couple of yards. The trick play with Sewell throwing to Elway for the touchdown has brought back to life to the Denver fans. Watch 77. Carl Mecklenburg gets turned by Christensen. Whoops, who's that? Oh, that's the ball carrier. Dennis Smith on the assist. Historically, the Denver Broncos defense has been a big emotional establisher for this football team. Right now, knowing that the offense is struggling, they're in there looking for a turnover. Blitz, they pick it up. Swing pass, Marcus Allen in open field. And Allen is all the way out to midfield for the Raiders. He has a first down, a 25-yard gain. Excellent job by Mark Wilson. Saw the blitz, and at times you're going to have someone not picked up. Christensen releases. His offensive line does an outstanding job, and that's not a bad outlet receiver right there. Get it to him. That's a pass for about five yards and a gain of almost 30. The rookie's in motion as Hawkins gets the carry, and he hits hard into the right side of the Denver defense and gets close to the Bronco 47-yard line. Our producer today for NBC Sports is George Finkel. Our director, Richard Klein. Executive producer of NBC Sports, Michael Weissman, as we're down to 10 minutes to play in the first half. The Raiders scored first on a 35-yard touchdown throw. Elway to Watson. Then the Raiders came storming back. Two touchdown passes by Mark Wilson. A safety, and Elway stepped in the back of the end zone. It was 19-7 Los Angeles. Now it's 19-14. A throw and on the blitz. Nearly an interception. But Mike Harden can't go on. They were going to the rookie, Rod Barksdale, who never played high school or never played college football. He was a track All-American at Arizona, wrote a letter to the Raiders, made the team after a very fine showing in the preseason. In that letter, he mentioned his times in the 40. He was a track teammate of Vance Johnson of the Denver Broncos, and his times were, they sounded like they were all downhill, under 4-4. Four, four. He can catch it also. They're going to be going to him deep before long. Rod Barksdale at the top of your screen. They'll be looking at him long before long. Wilson takes a look. He throws, and the ball is caught by Christensen down to the 32-yard line of the Broncos. Now Christensen coming underneath the coverage as Barksdale went deep, and so did Doki Williams. 15-yard reception. Watch him fight his way through all this traffic. Barksdale is clearing out. Harden, the man in coverage. Excellent adjustment to the ball thrown behind Christensen. He and Mark Wilson been throwing and catching for a lot of years. Teammates at BYU. So now the Raiders, after they gave up the touchdown to Denver, coming right back down the field, and they're throwing the ball very well. Mark Wilson pulling the trigger today for Los Angeles as he goes to Marcus Allen, who gets to the 28. First down carry, netted about two or three. Game clock winding down to 8.50 to go in the first half. At halftime, we'll be going to NFL 86 in New York for a complete recap of the scores and the highlights of this opening day. Day with a considerable amount of upset so far. You watch Marcus Allen run the football. He has that ability that all great running backs do. You don't know how they do it. That time Simon Fletcher, 73, had a clear shot at Allen, hit him, didn't phase him, just kept right on running. Wilson going deep to Doki Williams, and the coverage is good. Louis Wright, five times an all-pro player at cornerback, running stride for stride with Doki Williams. So now third down and eight arises for the Raiders at the 28-yard line of Denver. It's a 19-14 game, Los Angeles, 8-18 to play in the first half. We saw a shot of Mark Wilson. There he is, 11-2 last year as a starting quarterback for the Los Angeles Raiders. Only two quarterbacks in the NFL won more games. Dan Marino of Miami, Jim McMahon of Chicago. Not really in very good graces with the Raider fans in Los Angeles, though. Wilson doesn't like it, but he takes off. 
Louis Wright came up and got him on the slide, and now with the advance down to the 24-yard line, it brings up fourth down and about four. Chris Barr and the field goal unit comes out for Los Angeles. Loneliest job in professional sports right there, that of a place kicker. The only guy he can sit down and talk with for a long time is a hockey goalkeeper. That's the only guy he has anything in common with. Sometimes things work out right. The Cincinnati Bengals, your old team, cut him. Went to the Raiders. First year there, they won a Super Bowl. They showed him, didn't they? Again, he puts that little hook on the ball and drifts it right through. So Chris Barr's been perfect today, and the Raiders now open up a 22-14 lead, and we'll be back. At Mile High Stadium, Dan Reeves, the Denver coach, said before the game, this can't be the biggest game of the year if we got 15 to play after it, but it's pretty big. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I think he was downplaying how important this football game is, knowing the Raiders are the Denver Broncos' biggest opponent in the division. And the fact that the Denver Broncos have been projected as a contender for the Super Bowl, uh, today you find out if you're a contender or pretender. So far, it doesn't look good for the Broncos. Jets have now come back to take a seven-point lead on Buffalo as the kick goes downfield. And coming back hard is Gene Lang going into the outside. Sammy Seal trying to run him down and finally gets him out of bounds at the 30. Well, the Broncos go on offense first and 10, and as we look at the 10-minute ticker, let's get set to go back to New York and Bob Costas. All right, Don, after spotting Buffalo a 7-0 lead early, the Jets have come back and they lead 14-7 after this 46-yarder from Ken O'Brien to Al Toon. A pretty play for the touchdown. The Jets by 7 in the second at Buffalo. Back to Don and Bob. 7-12 to play in the first half here at Mile High Stadium. As John Elway, you see good numbers on the board. He included his production as a touchdown reception. The last time the Broncos had the ball and a trick play that worked. Oop, lame duck, free ball. It falls incomplete at the 47-yard line of the Raiders. Long right in his face. Last season, the Los Angeles Raiders began the season against the New York Jets. Sacked Ken O'Brien 10 times. The coaches of the New York Jets thought that uh, Raider defensive line hit O'Brien probably 30 times all day long. That's what the Ra that's what the Broncos are going to get unless they can establish some running game to keep the defensive line of the Raiders honest. Howie Long has been a Pro Bowl starter for three straight years. Now in his sixth year, he's the best, and he's coming hard again as penalty markers go down. They're going to get the Broncos on a holding call as Vance Johnson got the ball out to the 39-yard line and paid for it. Mike Haynes hit him hard as Vance Johnson slow to get up. He's grabbing his knee too. So this standout second year receiver Vance Johnson goes down and is attended to as the play will come back on a holding call. Now watch what Denver's trying to do. Just use Johnson's foot speed. Clear the line of scrimmage to avoid the bump and run and then outrun Mike Haynes. Let's see if we can see the injury. I believe he's grabbing his. I think he's grabbing his right knee. I don't think that's a serious injury. Luckily for the Denver Broncos, I. You can make a heck of a diagnosis from 300 yards away. Well, I'll tell you what. Now you've been there a lot of times. Yeah, you have a lot of trainers leaning over you. You can tell by how things turn and how gra guys grab things as to whether they're serious, minor, I'll be back, let's see the way he walks. Dan Reeves with a protest to Jim Tunney. Now that doesn't look too good, although he's putting weight on it. Vance Johnson coming off. But they say you know it's really serious when one of the guys looking at him has a tie on. <laughs> or the other team motions for your team doctor. Let's see if we can pick up what happened here. Your diagnosis was right. Vance Jansen's coming right up. I don't think that's serious. I think he kind of got his leg hyperextended, hyperextended slightly, but I think we'll be back. He'll be back quickly. Major League Baseball, the regular season coming down the stretch. The Red Sox now leading by a commanding margin in the American League East. Go against the Yankees next Saturday afternoon, or it's the Reds against the Dodgers. 
NBC's Major League Baseball Game of the Week next Saturday. Clint Sampson is now in at wide receiver. He'll be going deep on a second and 20. Hard throw. Mark Jackson, a rookie from Purdue, coming over the middle, gets the ball and gets out to the 32-yard line where it'll bring up third down and about 10. Here comes uh, Johnson back in the ball game. Jackson knows how to catch it. Caught a lot of passes from Jim Everett at Purdue. He comes out. Vance Johnson stays in the ball game. And a lot of speculation that the Houston Oilers who have not signed Jim Everett, who is one of the high draft picks this year, might trade him to one of the Los Angeles teams. The Raiders said they called, but we're not interested. Rams are supposedly heading some conversations. Here's Elway spinning out. And gets the ball away spectacularly to Vance Johnson. Open field move and a fine tackle by Seal. Saved a lot of yards, but on third and long, third and ten, the Broncos get a first down, but again, Vance Johnson is slow to get up. That's the same leg. Watch what happens here. He's running a pattern. It looks fine. It's his right leg. Stacy Turan there. And then once again, the ability of John Elway to scramble. He just he throws it back across the field, makes the catch. Now watch his right leg. It looks like it just goes out from underneath him when he tries to make a move on it. Now this looks a little more serious. When your leg starts giving it away, then you're looking for the bench for a while. Tough one for Vance Johnson. And the Broncos. Last week in a final preseason game against the Rams, Vance caught 11 passes for 195 yards and opened up big here today. First Elway throw to him was for 21 yards and soon after was followed by an Elway touchdown pass to Watson. But since then, the Raiders have come back strong, and right now they lead 22 to 14 with 5 minutes and 40 seconds to play. First half. Now the Broncos setting to run. Our formation. Here's a pitch back to Sewell. He was their number one draft choice from Oklahoma a year ago. Cutting back, he got about three, maybe four, down to the 48-yard line of the Raiders. Van McElroy, the Raider free safety, tackled him. Both quarterbacks with some good numbers. Wilson, 7 of 15, 152 yards and two touchdowns. Elway, 10 of 16, 137 yards and a touchdown. And I noticed the Denver Broncos have got Mark Cooper back in the ball game, but now he's playing left guard. Paul Howard still at right guard. Ryan at center. Bishop, Keith Bishop is the guy out of the lineup. Draw play and a fine defensive play by the Raiders. Reading it all the way, James Davis, an extra defensive back, number 45, shot the gap and made the knockdown. Tackle on Gene Lang, and the game clock continues to run down to 4.40 to play. First half. Raiders 22, Broncos 14. Bron Excuse me, that was a safety blitz by the Los Angeles Raiders. He had the good luck, pure coincidence, that he blitzed right in the spot where the Denver Broncos were running the draw play. Easy tackle for Davis. needs eight on this third down throw. Here comes the blitz and all out rush and open man. So is wide open. Puts a move on McElroy and gets down to the 33 yard line. He has a Bronco first down on a 17 yard gain. Blown coverage. They never covered Sewell. Tell you what though, that's a great tackle by McElroy. If he doesn't make the tackle, it's six points. You see Turan. You see everybody coming up there. Piquel is untouched. Sewell the hot receiver. McElroy makes a great tackle. That, I mean, they, they, somebody did blow the coverage, but boy, that is a touchdown-saving tackle by Van McElroy. Corners of the Los Angeles Raiders, not very good tacklers. Safeties, very good tacklers. McElroy and Toran. That's his job. Get him in the open field. Now on first down, the pitch back comes to Sammy Winder. Led the Broncos in rushing last season, working hard to get three against the Raider defense. Rod Mark knocks him down along with Matt Millen. Ball positioned at the 30-yard line of the Los Angeles Raiders. Raiders defeated the Broncos twice in overtime last year when the final numbers were up at season's end. The Raiders had a 12-4 record and a record in a, nine, in a 
AFC Western Championship and despite an 11 and 5 finish just one game off Broncos were the first 11 game winner not to make the playoffs. We'll be checking the scoreboard after this play. Looks like he has a first down for Denver as the Broncos start to run the ball with some success as the game wears on. Now the scoreboard. San Diego and Miami putting up points down the coast of San Diego. 26 to 14 now. Chargers in the lead. New England continues to hold a seven point lead. Cincinnati and Kansas City still tied and Seattle still leading Pittsburgh 6 nothing. Those late starting games all at halftime. We're two minutes and eight seconds from halftime here in Mile High Stadium. Mark Jackson's wide to the near side as Elway goes to the draw. Gene Lang takes it down to the 20. Matt Millen and Paul Howard. out of the two minute warning Trump the Broncos today have four illegal use of hands calls and defensive line makes you do a lot of things back after this Tom Flores a rather remarkable statistic a record giving high praise to Flores talents as a coach only Shula has won more games over the past seven seasons than Tom Flores who's beginning his eighth year as head coach of the Raiders in his second year as head coach of the Raiders they won the Super Bowl very low-key coach kind of let the players do what they want just get them to the plane to travel to Denver make sure they show up with game time on time pretty much leaves the direction of the team in the hands of the veterans and they know how to take care of themselves Elway and the Broncos with 157 to go in the first half throwing a completion to Gene Lang and a good defensive play Stacy Turan the strong safety comes up to make the stop Greg Townsend was putting a rush on John Elway. Brings up third down now for Denver as the sun has broken through. Now Don, uh, so far the Raiders have done an outstanding job of rushing their defensive ends wide to keep John Elway from rolling out and just scrambling through the defense like he generally does against most teams. You know, doubt in anybody's mind that the defensive people, the Raiders, reminded those defensive ends get outside and upfield. Keep Elway in there. Don Shula says the Raiders are the fastest team in football and they've improved on that speed as Elway goes deep now. And it's incomplete in the end zone. No call. He was looking. Now there's a penalty marker down. Penalty marker goes down late in the end zone. Turan was covering. Discussion is whether or not the ball can be caught. If the officials determine that the ball could not be caught, no penalty. And Matt Millen is hot. That's why they stopped there and talked for a minute. That ball can't be caught. Clark Kent couldn't get that one. Neither could Manute Bull. But nevertheless, the interference penalty stands, and it's at the one. I think that's a break for the Denver Broncos. I think it's a big break for the Broncos, and they'll gladly accept it as the ball is down to the one-yard line, first and goal. Be tough to go to overtime today because of that safety. They'll figure out a way. It's right. The last three times these teams <laughs> haven't decided it until overtime. <laughs> Over the top. Touchdown Raiders. I thought Elway might take it himself, so he just scored by passing, running, and receiving. Oh, and the thing that surprises me the most is these two teams have put up 42 points on the board in the first half. And the turning point, the turning point was the trick play to get the Denver Broncos back in the ball game. A tight end trap by Clarence K, 88. Gene Lang with good power, stuttered number 70 with a decent block, and into the end zone. So the Raiders and the questionable interference call in the end zone. See, the Broncos go first and goal from the one, and Gene Lang is in the end zone quickly, so now Carlos is on the field. Find the point after, which will bring Denver back to within one. 
It's a 22-21 game. It's good. Giving up the touchdown run from a yard out after the penalty call against them, ready to return the kickoff from Denver. 107 left to go in the first half. Raiders 22, Broncos 21. That's an excellent drive. 6-17. A lot of different things. A couple of penalties helped, especially the pass interference. At the end of the first quarter, the Raiders had a 19-7 lead. Stephon Adams running the ball back for Los Angeles is thrown back on good special teams play by Denver. Mike Harden was down, number 31, first man to hit him, along with Ken Bell, 35. Uh, look at 98 there of the Denver Broncos. Rick Hundley, I think you're beginning to see a little fatigue. He's uh, not only starting and playing most defensive plays and calling the defensive signals, but he's on the kickoff coverage. And of course, with that big battle with Steve Busick, who was traded to the Los Angeles Rams. There's Paul Howard taking over on the offensive line. Keith Bishop is now the man out. Mark Cooper has moved to the other side. One minute to go in the first half. Nobody plays beat the clock like the Raiders. Let's see what they do in this final minute as they get the ball out to the 30-yard line. First down carry, good for 10. Four new downs. Clock ticking, though, down, as you see. 45 seconds. That's the wrong clock imposed right there. The, our clock stopped, but the official clock was still running. We're down to 35. Our unofficial clock just jammed for the moment there. The game clock is down to 30 seconds to play. And Bron running. Broncos with six defensive backs, Don. Hawkins. Now the Raiders call a timeout with 19, 18 seconds to play in the first half. So we'll be back right after this. At Mile High Stadium, Hawkins just ran the ball for the Raiders. Got ahead for a first down, but there's only 10 seconds to play now in the first half. Raiders holding to a 22-21 lead. Denver can't look Raiders forward to this. Walk off. They're not going to put it in play. Don Denver can't look forward to this third quarter in 1985. Yep. Miserable third quarter. They were outscored 103 to 39 in the third quarters in the 85 season. It cost them dearly. Rarely scored a point late in the season in the third quarter. So the Denver Broncos with coach Dan Reeves head to the locker room and the Raiders and coach Flores go back in for the halftime council session with a 22-21 score on the board. The Raiders holding to a one-point lead after they trailed 7-0 then came back to lead 19-7 over the Broncos. We'll be going to New York for NFL 86 very shortly as it has turned now into a very lovely day in Denver, Colorado. The threat of rain seems to be gone, although the lights around the sun has broken through. It really did was offset the Denver, the Raider pass rush when they did run successfully late in the second quarter. Got most of those yards, and that opened it up for Elway, who is really a consummate quarterback now. He used to be he glared down the one receiver he was going to. Now he checks out everybody on the field. It's going to be interesting to see what the loss or the availability of Vance Johnson is for the Denver Broncos in the second half. He went off the second quarter with a bad knee. Pretty impressive statistics for the Los Angeles Raiders. Last year in both games that these two teams played, the Los Angeles Raiders trailed at halftime. The Denver Broncos with their miserable performance in the third quarter last year. You can't repeat that stat en enough. What was the three to 39 they were outscored in the third quarter three to one. So I think uh, just to change the tune of things Dan Reeves has got to go with game plan A in this third quarter try to get points in the scoreboard just to forget last year's third quarter performance. Well I asked Dan before the game what went wrong in the two losses to the Raiders last year and he said the third quarter what hurt us all season long against almost everybody they still finished 11 and 5 did the Broncos. And John Elway, who came into the league, some questioned his ability as a winner. Wasn't that far over 500 at Stanford. Well, only one quarterback in the NFL over the past two seasons has a better one-loss record as the starter. That's Dan Marino. Coming into this game, Elway's 23-7 over the last two seasons. Stephon Adams is going to bring it back on the kickoff to open the third quarter for the Raiders, and he breaks it across the 30. 
Carlos runs him down, and Stefan Adams' his family run out of bat. 46-yard line of the Los Angeles Raiders. 49-yard return, so the Raiders come out and go bang on the opening kickoff. You can see when he made that return, Don, when he got to the wall, that is his blockers and the Denver Bronco defenders, they were all lined up there. And he goes by Tony Lilly, 22, and all of a sudden, Stephon Adams with great foot speed, Rich Carlos credited with the tackle, but that's great field position for the Raiders to start. First and 10 at their own 46. Hand off to Marcus Allen with that change of pace move, then the acceleration, he gets to the 50-yard line, a gain of four yards on the play for Marcus Allen, who gained 45 yards a carry, or 45 yards total in the first half, 4.5 a carry. Watch Ricky Hundley take on Frank Hawkins, stands him up, makes the tackle. That's a good job by an inside linebacker who was given the nod over Steve Busick at inside linebacker. He also calls the defensive signals for the Broncos. Second down, Wilson and the Raiders need six. Luke pass to Hawkins, breaks the tackle. Mecklenburg gets him, but too late to stop the first down yardage as the Raiders advance it down to the 41-yard line of Denver. Broncos defense normally very, very sure tacklers. There have been a lot of misses today, Don. Hawkins with an excellent move, but I think eight times out of ten, Louis Wright makes that, makes that tackle. Check that ticker momentarily. Mark Wilson at 6'6", is the tallest NFL quarterback, weighs 205 pounds. He took over when Jim Plunkett was injured in the third game last year. And despite all the disparaging remarks about Wilson, the Raiders were 11-2 and two with the win the rest of the way. Marcus Allen, working hard, gets down to the 25-yard line. The 10-minute ticker, a 16-yard gain for Marcus Allen. Now into the third quarter, Jets leading Buffalo by a 14-10 count. San Diego continues to lead the Miami Dolphins, who went into San Diego as a slight favorite. And the rest of the scores, now Kansas City has broken the 7-7 deadlock with Cincinnati. How about that move by Marcus Allen? Stopped dead in the hole, then accelerated for about 12 yards. gave the Raiders a first down at the 25-yard line of Denver. Marcus Allen. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching Colorado's News Channel, KCNC-TV, Denver. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. A stadium sold out for the 121st Denver Bronco regular season game. 17 years of setups. They begin now at this 1986 season. Broncos came in and opened up with a 7-0 lead. Now they find themselves down 22-21 early in the third quarter and the Raiders challenging. Throwing a strike. Rod Barksdale catches his first pass as a professional. And penalty markers come in after the play. Barksdale, the track man from Arizona who wrote to the Raiders and asked for a tryout. I think he's going to be against Denver. A late hit. First no foul. Denver. Sometimes you not only have to play good football, you have to play smart football, especially in big games like this. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 43. Half the distance of the goal line, first down. Got it on Steve Foley, the veteran and very good free safety for the Broncos. Special teams play. Most important, and the Raiders got the big play to open the third quarter on the kickoff return by Stephon Adams, 49 yards. And now they've subsequently taken it down inside the 10 on the penalty. Marcus Allen running hard, taking hits and driving down to the two-yard line, where it'll be second and goal. Wasn't a great opening day for Buddy Ryan as head coach of the Eagles. He did have an interesting quote during the week. He said that offense sells tickets, defense wins games, and special teams wins championships. Watch how many tackles that Marcus Allen breaks. There's one. That's a clear hit by Townsend runs through it. Foley, Foley finally wrestles him to the ground. For as lanky as Marcus Allen appears, a very, very strong running back. Durability might be his greatest asset. Never wears down. 
Takes it down close, but no hands up. Now they go up. The linesman throws them up, and Marcus Allen is in with a touchdown. And the Raiders open up a six. Point, let's see it, 28 to 21 lead. Very important extra point would give them again the eight point advantage. So often, just a kickoff return to open the second half marks the big difference. Another short trap. You see Kirk Marsh, number 60, leading up in there. Nobody to block. Allen right behind him. That was an impressive drive by the Raiders. Marcus Allen in his fifth year has now scored 60 NFL touchdowns in 57 games. Chris Barr follows the touchdown with an extra point that gives the Raiders a 29-21 lead. Raiders kick it off when we come back to Denver. Here's Marcus Allen on the payoff end of a drive in which the Raiders never used a third down. Good lead block by Frank Hawkins and a good short pull by Kurt Marsh, number 60. That's a lot of company into the end zone for Marcus Allen. And that opening kickoff of the third quarter by Stefan Adams set it all up when he ran it back 49 yards. Now Chris Barr booms one into the end zone, and Ken Bell, a rookie, will not bring it out. Vance Johnson not in in the second half after banging up his right knee, the very valuable return man and receiver for the Denver Broncos. Raiders went right down the field. First time they got the ball in the third quarter. Now let's see what Elway and the Broncos can do, Trump. Don, nothing that takes the steam out of your offense like that. A big return to open the second half on the kickoff, and then seven plays right down the field, a 55-yard scoring drive for a touchdown, and now the pressure's back on this Denver offense, which, with the exception of the last drive of the second half, not very consistent today. You got the rookie in, Mark Jackson, but the Broncos on first down go to the run. They worked hard to get just 27 yards running against this tough Raider defense in the first half. Sammy Winder ahead. Gets a couple of yards to bring up second down and eight. Mark Jackson, the rookie from Purdue, is in now replacing the injured Vance Johnson. Look at this. Go with a quick huddle at the line of scrimmage. Try to keep players on the sideline, defensive players from the Raiders. Not allow the extra defensive backs and pass rushers to come in. Here's the throw and a strike to Gene Lang and a big league hit by Matt Millen. <laughs> He's made a few of those in his career. Once again, John Elway wants his team at the line of scrimmage. The Raiders are trying to substitute. Can't get their people in. Now they can get a penalty. Yes, they got extra people on as Elway wisely they close it out of bounds and the markers go down. They, they got penalty it. yards. They got it. See, they got them two ways. Denver's got, a, got them two ways. If they're trying to get people on and they can get people at the line of scrimmage and snap it, five-yard penalty, too many, too many men on the field. If they can't do that, you're still running against the standard defense. The field, defense, five yards, first down. Now, even though players are running to the sideline, have no intentions whatsoever of being involved in the play, they still are counted. A good idea and it works. Gets him a first down. So Elway and the Broncos coming out again with a change in game plan. Certainly one for the Raiders they were not expecting. Going with the two minute offense without huddles as they open the third quarter with their first possession. Quickly to the run, the Raiders again shut it down. Jamie Kimmel, a young linebacker from Syracuse, came up to stuff Gene Lang. Watch how he long. He's on Ken Lanier. You see Bishop 54 trying to make a block. Oh, long there once again. Denver going with that quick offense down at the line of scrimmage. Second and long. Elway gets away. Lester Hayes was the closest to the ball. Coming out of blitz was the second-year linebacker from Tennessee, Reggie McKenzie, who, as you saw, had Elway for the moment. Then he spun away. It was an incomplete pass. I'm surprised they didn't call this in the grass. You can see 54 is untouched. In most instances, I do believe officials would call that in the grass, but Elway very elusive as a quarterback. Still goes as an incomplete pass. Brings up third down and nine. Now Denver goes back to the huddle. And the Raiders bring in their extra people for the pass set. Third nine. Swing pass. Will Hyde has some open field and he gets out to the 
the 36-yard line. Way short of where he had to go, so the Raiders will get it back on a punt with 10.41 to play in the third quarter. Los Angeles leading 29-21, and now a check of the 10-minute ticker. San Diego scored again. Not a happy opening day for the Dolphins at San Diego. New England defending AFC champions with a commanding lead on the Patriot on the Colts at Patriot Stadium in Foxborough. Right now, Jack Wheel is ready to punt the ball for Denver. High kick, Napoleon McCallum under the ball at the 24-yard line. Not much there for Napoleon. There also is a penalty marker down. Don, Denver's going to get it back. This is going to be against the Los Angeles Raiders. While the ball's in the air, I think Denver's going to get it back. No, you can read his lips. He just said post possession. Here's the first of the post. Number 44, Los Angeles, unsportsmanlike conduct. The team 10 lies from the end of the run. Post possession fouls, they keep possession. On a punt, possession ends when it leaves the punter's foot. So that was ruled after the punt, and the yards tacked on where it was received by the Los Angeles Raiders. Wilson, who took his team right down the field on the Raiders' first possession of the second half with Marcus Allen on the payoff end, now comes out again. Very cool under fire. Mark Wilson will have to wait a minute until we come back. With Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey back at Mile High Stadium. NBC statistician Dennis Manishin totaling the numbers. Mark Wilson, after missing his first four throws of this game, Hit 10 of his next 14, 10 of 18 for the day for 174 yards and two touchdowns. Marcus Allen has over 125 yards. He has 130 yards total offense, 75 running, 55 catching. He's going for more and gets more. And a first down carry. Marcus Allen goes, but there is a marker down. A reminder: another 100-yard rushing day by Marcus Allen, holding Raiders. Day by Marcus Allen, and he's got the NFL record for consecutive 100 yard rushing days. Presently tied with Walter Payton, who gets it today would be his 10th. That's where I read that right there. 6'2, 205 pounds. Holding number 46 at the distance of the goal line. After he won the Heisman Trophy in 1981, two backs were drafted ahead of him, two running backs in that draft. They were Darren Nelson, who went to the Vikings, and Gerald Riggs out of Arizona State, who went to Atlanta. Marcus was not pleased and has done something about it since. Hawkins is stuck. Riven Carter gets him along with Rulon Jones as the knockdown is made inside the five-yard line. This was ugly from the start. Hawkins almost decks Mark Wilson. Boom, right there. Nice little shot. And then Reuben Carter, Rulon Jones there to make the tackle for a loss. Defensive front for the Denver Broncos. Reuben Carter is the nose tackle. Four down linemen, the very fast Simon Fletcher's in the game at right end. He's 73. Rulon Jones is in. So is Greg. There is a handoff now as the pitch to Marcus Allen turns it up field and is knocked out of bounds as he gets to the 10-yard line. Short of the first down, a second down carry. Way short. They've got third and 10 coming up. See that? Even in the heat of a rivalry like this, Marcus Allen and Dennis Smith giving a low five there, former teammates. You mentioned his durability. He is incredibly durable. They, some I of the hits he takes here is two years ago when he took the hardest shot I saw all season. Tom Jackson got him in the open field after he caught a swing pass. I thought it was Alan would go out in a stretch and he didn't go out even for a play. He was right back in the lineup. I thought it was Mecklenburg. Just absolutely snapped his head back. Hand off again to Marcus Allen. He's out to the 16 yard. Bumble. Line. Ray Broncos think they have it. Woodard is heading to the end zone. And Woodard is in a signal, a touchdown. 
So the Denver defense delivers, and the Broncos are back in it again. 29 to 27. The replay here could be critical. You realize that? Ken Woodard made the hit and made the fumble recovery for the touchdown. Here's the replay. Good yardage. Where's the ball loose? It's loose. Good call. It's loose. And in the end zone. The players on Denver say that Ken Woodard from Tuskegee is the second best natural athlete on the defense after Dennis Smith. So the Raiders give up a touchdown with their offensive unit on the field. Now Carlos will try to make it again a one-point game. The replay official is looking at the replay again. He can look at it when we don't have to, when we can't. Once again, let's watch close. There's another view. Mike Harden's in the way. That ball is loose. That ball is loose. Good call by the official. That was a fumble. Confirmed that Marcus Allen was not down when he lost possession of the ball, and Ken Woodard, who struck him first, picks it up, goes in from 12 yards out. Now the Broncos have Carlos down the field with Kubiak holding, looking for a point after that'll bring them back to within one. So with 8.46 to go, it's a one-point game. Raiders were in the third quarter. Once again, we'll watch this, this play, fumble or not, ruled by the officials a fumble. I agree. I'll try to point out the ball to you when it comes loose. Still got it. Still got it. Now there it goes. Woodard made the first hit, and Tony Lilly, a backup safety, also struck hard, helping free the ball. 1977, Rob Lytle... Now retired, goes into the Raider defense. Jack Tatum hits him. Fumble the ball. That was a turning point in the game. And right now up the field goes Napoleon McCallum across the 20 and out to the 22-yard line. Now bright sunshiny day in Denver after it was very overcast earlier. Check of the ticker. Miami's put another touchdown up to come within 12 of the Chargers at San Diego. New England pulling away against the Colts. And Seattle now shutting out the Steelers through three quarters of play. Earlier finals, Bears won. Washington blew out the Buddy Ryan Eagles, and the Rams won a big one on the road, beating the Cardinals at St. Louis. Dickerson had a big day. Wilson on first down. Gets time. He gets Christensen. His fourth catch of the day is good for a first down out to the 37-yard line. It's not supposed to be fast, but he always seems to be open. That was good for a 14-yard gain. Houston with a big opening upset at Green Bay. And the Lions, an underdog, went to Minneapolis and beat the Vikings 13-10. San Francisco blew out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Florida. And Atlanta, an underdog, pulled away early in Routed the New Orleans Saints at the Superdome. Eight minutes to go, third quarter. Raiders leading by one point. Marcus Allen in trouble. Ruline Jones on the tackle. You can see the Broncos do an excellent job at the point of attack. Delay, it's a counter. Hundley's there to at least alter where Marcus Allen is going. Rulon Jones, good on the offside. You wait until that guy comes back to you before you turn around and head back downfield. He makes the tackle. Second down and 16 for the Raiders. Third quarter, they lead by a point. Christensen, first down, Los Angeles out to the 43-yard line. Now they're going to rule he did not hold the ball. Oh, he got it, but not enough for a first oh, down. Oh, he's going to be short, yeah. One of the most sure-handed receivers, Christensen once again gets lost in the shuffle. 
a delay outside. You see Allen clearing out. Mecklenburg slips. Good enough for about 12 yards. Brings up third and about four. The Raiders' speed on the flanks takes the Denver zone deep, and then big tight end Todd Christensen comes underneath. Four catches, five catches now today for 70 yards. You'll remember he was in for a touchdown in the first half. I'd watch him here, too. Third and four. Wilson going the distance. Dante Williams catches the ball. Boxdale has it, the rookie. Rod Barksdale, a flyer from Arizona. The kid who never played high school or college football is in the end zone on a 57-yard touchdown reception. That's Steve Wilson shocker. was victimized. Looked to be with him. Barksdale had the step and came down with the ball. Now, if this kid didn't play high school in or college, preseason doesn't count. This has got to be his first touchdown ever. He does a great job of concentrating on this football. Wilson makes an outstanding throw. 57 yards. Denver thought they were just going to try for the first down. Uh-oh. The Raiders like to go deep. Raiders caught speed one-on-one, -on -one, and speed one is Barksdale, the fastest Raider, got deep for his first professional touchdown. In the regular season, he did well in the preseason, caught some long balls. So again in this high scoring game the Raiders open up an eight point lead. The Raiders just get another big play. Here it is as Mark Wilson drops to throw and goes long ball to a rookie sprinter. Barksdale It's good for 88 or 57 yards in a touchdown. And Mark Wilson won't be in any fan polls to see who's the worst quarterback <laughs> in Los Angeles. What is he today? 11 of 19 for 231 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, that shocked the Denver Broncos. I think they thought they were going for just the first down, and they hit deep. Takes the wind out of them. Gandell runs back the kickoff. Rookie from Boston College straight ahead out to the 33-yard line for the Broncos. Starts always with good pass protection. You can see the offensive line of the Raiders giving that to Wilson. And then it's just kind of a hand fight down the sideline. This is a perfectly thrown ball outside where the defender can't get to it unless there is pass interference. He concentrates. The motherland. Tom Flores, normally very unemotional, but mind celebrating. At least outwardly. He's churning inside in this big game, and here is Elway with a throw that's too high for Mark Jackson. Denver Zephyr's baseball team still in action, so the infield dirt is still down in the baseball portion of the stadium. See that number? 104 yards to 12 in the third quarter. Dan Reeves doesn't want to see this tendency continue. Last year, as we've documented, cost them a lot of chances in a lot of games. Phenomenally high-scoring game for the Raiders and the Broncos, who pride themselves on defense, 36-28. Los Angeles leads, and we still have six minutes to go in the third quarter. Pitch up the middle to Sewell, and he's out to the 41-yard line. On a second and ten play, he got seven. Bill Piquel, the nose tackle, knocked him down. That's a happy Raider. And Chal Davis mentioned to us before the game that we've got some young people here. I'm not sure how we're going to play. I think we're good. I'm not really sure. Said so playing the Denver Broncos away. Open the season very difficult for us. Well, the young guys have come up with a big plays. Barksdale is a perfect example. He's a real fine. Most of those world-class printers have Dr. Strange Glove hands. <laughs> Elway. Long trying to get him. Elway throws deep. It's a free ball. It's incomplete. Lots of people collide, and then they start up after the play. Elway got hammered. Absolutely hammered by Greg Townsend got a shot right in the chest that was intended to come back to uh, Sewell he was well covered so we've got a flag Elway's big and strong and he needed all of it to offset that hit that's the hit downfield as the pass was broken up, but there was a call against the Raiders. Contact, number 43, defense, five yards, makes it a first down. Sam Seal, play it. 
when you're playing defensive back against the Denver Broncos, because of the ability to John Elway to scramble and get the ball down the field, you're going to have a lot of calls against you. The Raiders don't mind being penalized either. Most penalized team in the, in the league for a number of years are still able to, to function. Take a long time on the drop. You know it's going to come. Usually from the blind side, that big hit from the Raider pass rush as Gene Lang takes it out to the 50-yard line. On a first down carry, he gained four. Rod Martin, veteran outside linebacker from USC on the stop. Jets continue to lead the Bills in the fourth quarter by a 14 to 10 count. Jim Kelly starting for the Buffalo Bills, his first game in the NFL. Miami's defense, which wasn't great last year, appears to have gotten no better. Down at San Diego, they're having a problem. New England pulling away over Indianapolis. Kansas City looks like a winner over Cincinnati. Blitz coming here, Don. Swing pass to Mark Jackson, and the Raiders have him in, and Lester Hayes brings him under. Five-time Pro Bowler, Lester Hayes. Trimmed down. 203. He played at 28, 220 last year. Now, when you're in bump and run as much as Lester is and the Raiders are, you need to be quick because a lot of teams now are coming with guys like like Vance Johnson. Uh, very fast, very quick. So at 220, you may be able to beat them up, but they're going to outrun you to the end zone. Third down and the uh, Denver Broncos need just over 10. Elway throws. He's got a man. Mark Jackson didn't get there. He's down to the 46-yard line. He looks to be inches away. Now he's more than that, a yard away. And coaches in the stands say, go for it. Dan Reeves is thinking about it. I think and they are. No, oh, here comes Jack Wheel in. Hunter's coming out. Dan Reeves, who spent 16 years in the Dallas organization as a player and a coach. It's coach Tom Landry is looking on today in Dallas, getting set for his opener with the Giants tomorrow night. We'll be broadcasting whoops, whoops, this game this. on NBC look at this. Radio as right now. Wheel under center. We trying to draw a the penalty. <laughs> They'll try to draw a penalty here, Don. Motion. So all they're trying to do is draw a penalty. The Raiders weren't buying it. There's a penalty marker down. Back up field. A delay a game is all. And there'll be a five-yard knockoff. And the regular punter will come in. Well, not a bad idea. You try. Uh, you put your punter up underneath the center. Hopefully nobody notices. Somebody panics on the defensive line. Jumps across. You get your five yards. And it's a first down. Well, Coach Reeves has gone to the trick play today and it was a throw from Sewell to Elway that gave the Raiders one of the Broncos one of their touchdowns. Raiders have come back have moved the ball when they've had to and they again hold an eight point lead 36 28 241 to play in the third quarter. Well hit ball McCallum has a problem getting to it but the confidence goes out of bounds. 14-yard line, well done by the free agent from Wyoming, Jack Wheel. His dad has been a season ticket holder of Bronco games for 18 years. 39 yards on the punt. I imagine his dad is just breathless sitting somewhere here in Mile High Stadium. I'd like to welcome those of you watching the Pittsburgh at Seattle game. We're at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy, the Los Angeles Raiders in a wild game with a lot of big plays, leading 36 to 28. NBC Sports goes to week two among the feature games, the Raiders against the Redskins in Washington, the Chargers against the Giants in New Jersey. Marcus Allen with the slashing run. And now while we have a moment, Let's go back to NFL 86. Bob? Don, with 14 minutes to play in the game now, Jim Kelly and the Bills have the lead over the Jets. Watch this nice catch by Andre Reed off the Kelly pass. He sprints down the sideline and dives across. 55-yard TD and a 17-14 Buffalo lead. Thank you, Bob. Jim Kelly, worth the money. He's already paid his way to first year with a taste sold out. Buffalo Stadium over 80,000 for his first game. Wilson getting taken care of as Rulon Jones comes through. Wilson was looking.
looking at Mecklenburg, and he was picked up by Davis. Bruce Davis blocking well, but then from the other side came Rulon Jones for the sack. Quarterbacks have a way of letting you know what's going on. When Wilson finally gets on the ground here, it's, it's Henry Lawrence. Wilson kind of gives him, hey, what about this guy? That guy in the orange jersey on my back. Take care of him, will you? I think Rulon just signed him a big deal. What's he get about 800,000 a year to rush the passer? A lot. Heck of a lot more than Paul Brown gave you. Ever. Career. Marcus Allen hit hard, is knocked down at the 10-yard line, and now the Raiders have to punt the ball. 109 to go in the third quarter as the defensive coach Joe Collier of the Denver Broncos walks the sideline. A lot of new looks in the Denver defense also this year. Maybe subtle to the most viewers, but they're doing a lot of different things instead today at the outset. They are all over the place. Every time those offensive linemen have to identify who might be the pass rusher so you don't turn them loose on your quarterback. Ten men up, Don. Ray Guy hits it from the goal line. Will Height looks for a fair catch signal. It's going to carry out of bounds on the Raiders' side of the field. So Denver, trailing by eight, gets possession on the Raiders' side of the field. Let's see where they position the ball. 35-yard line. That way, and the offense come out with the best field position they've had to start a drive. 25-yard punt by Mr. Guy. For you tennis fans, in case you're interested, Lindo wins the U.S. Open. 4-2 and love. 6-4, 6-2, 6-love. Imagine that went uh, quickly. Your name, has, your name has to be Vashislav to get be in the picture in tennis these days. Lots of Ovas. <laughs> All players. Steve Sewell takes the ball and gets it inside the 35, a gain of just two. I saw Billie Jean King the other day, asked her how long she thought Navrat Tolova will dominate women's tennis. She said as long as she wants to. Is that right? She's that good an athlete. That good an athlete. Well, Steffi Graf made it difficult for her. We're going to wind down now the closing seconds of the third quarter of play here in the Mile High City. The Broncos and the Raiders meet again November 2nd at the L.A. Coliseum. That huge arena will be packed. They're starting construction of skyboxes there. They'll be ready next season in Los Angeles. Monday. He's dangerous. He's the liberal living in the dark. Three skyboxes at Mile High Stadium that opened this year. We talked about the Raiders. They'll have skyboxes at the Coliseum next season. And with those new skyboxes here at Mile High Stadium, the attendance goes to over 76,000. They're full, too. Elway trying to trigger a throw on an out pattern. The running back Gene Lang is behind him, so it brings up third down and eight. Had what they wanted, linebacker coverage on the running back. Most running backs should win that matchup. Big day in Buffalo as Jim Kelly has brought the Bills from behind in the fourth quarter over the heavily favored Jets. San Diego just chewing alive Miami's defense. Miami's nose tackle, Mike Charles, was suspended without pay for four games by Don Shula, one of their best defensive linemen. They couldn't find him. They finally sent somebody to his house. He had the phone off the hook. He'd missed a couple of practices. So now he's going to miss a few games and quite a few checks. Can't be forgetful of Shula and forget to come to practice. Long ball. K goes for it. Almost picked up by Turan, the strong safety, running with the Denver tight end. Well, let's see what we do here now if you're the Denver Broncos. The ball is at the 34, 44, and 7. That's a 51-yard or thereabout attempt. That's just about at Rich Carlos's limit. This is an important three points, too. Of course, all points, and points are important, but now a touchdown. Puts him ahead. 14.50 to go, though. 51-yard attempt. Carlos can hit it that far. Wind is not a factor today. See the banners are not out at all. No wind. That's enough. Knocks it right through the middle. So Rich Carlos 
Bryce, who has not had a lot of happy moments the last couple of years in Denver, he's had some problems, hits a big one, and all of a sudden the Broncos are back to it in five. Be back at Mile High Stadium. This is the highest scoring Bronco Raider game in the long history of this series back in 63. The Oakland Raiders beat the Denver Broncos 35-31. That was the highest scoring till now. Today we have another point up. It's 36-31 Raiders. A long way to go. A short kickoff, a high spinner, and McCallum will take it at the nine. Jensen McCallum working hard in his dress clothes and tennis shoes. He keeps on trucking free low. They got it. Denver got it. Broncos have it. Randy Robbins on the bottom. He does a nice job of breaking through the wall here. But sometimes when you when you get hit a little bit, Woodard hits him a little bit, and Millen tries to help him, all of a sudden it looks like it hit right on somebody's helmet. Bounced right out of McCallum's hand. Don, this is not first and 10 now. This is first and 39 for the Denver Broncos. All out right here. Broncos tailing by five, 36-31. We're in the fourth quarter. 14.30 to play in the game. Sewell will yes. go again. Oh, he was hoping to, but the Raiders sweep him under back at the Denver 48. Sean Jones got him. You'll remember earlier it was Sewell who threw the option pass, and he threw it to his quarterback, John Elway. It was resulting in a touchdown for Denver. Now you can see the frustration of the Denver Broncos to this point, as opposed to going with something basic to for the last 14 minutes of the football game, drive it down the field, you can tell a lot by what's called on the field as to the confidence of the coach on the sideline. I don't think Dan Reeves right now feels confident that his team can just take it right at the Raiders. Therefore, you go with the halfback option pass. Well, the Broncos know they can't run it. They've not been doing that today. Here's Elway eluding the rush. Needs a block. Gets one. Pulls a front to Watson. An absolutely superior catch. They say no. Here's another important replay. Elway breaks the cardinal sin, throwing back over the middle late, but he, with that gun, can get it off. Let's watch very closely. Boy, I'll tell you what, that looks like a catch. That looks like a catch. Can we see it again? You can see the umpire. The man with a U on his back in contact with the official up in the replay booth. There's the microphone. There's the hearing device. We do have a back judge who is marking where the completion was made down at the 31. Now they're ruling no catch. Can't tell from that angle. Well, the first one, that looked like a catch. Upon further review, the ball was stopped and complete. Third down. Well, Long out. As opposed to settling some controversy, first week of the NFL season 1968 created some. Yes, right. <laughs> Big one earlier was the interference call against Turan of the Raiders in the Raider end zone. And what appeared to be an overthrown ball, uncatchable. And we went against Los Angeles and Denver scored one play later from the one. Swing pass up the middle to Will Hart. Block is in front. Penalty knock is down. Will Hart is down to the 33-yard line. Now we got a penalty on the field. I believe why the ball was in the air, a Denver Bronco player was blocking. Broncos think it's against the Raiders. Once again, let's go back to the catch or non-catch. Rule the trap. It's very hard to distinguish. You can see Watson's hands underneath the ball. But you can't tell whether that ball hits the ground. With further review, not indisputable evidence that it was a catch and therefore no catch. It was trapped. Now what do we do? 
This will be a first down. Illegal use of the hands. Number 43 is five yards from the previous spot and first down. They don't care about the yardage. They want the first down, Denver does. Hey, every time these two teams play, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. This is playoff football, week one of the 1986 season. Raiders leading 36 to 31. They've led by as much as 19 to 7. That was at the end of the first quarter after Denver scored first. Went up 7 nothing in the game. And off to Gene Lang, and he gets some as he dives inside the 40 and down to the 38-yard line. Now while we have a moment, let's go back to Bob Costas at NFL 86. Don, yesterday, Miloslav Machir was able to beat Boris Becker, but today against Ivan Lendl, he ran out of miracles. In straight sets, Lendl is the men's champion of the U.S. Open 6-4, 6-2, 6-love. Earlier, Navratilova over Sokova to wear the women's crown. There's those overs. Sokova. Doesn't thrill me. Handoff goes to Sewell on a pitch back, and he's down to the 33-yard line. As we look at the 10-minute ticker, Jets now on a touchdown run by Johnny Hector with plenty of time remaining at Orchard Park, New York, have come back to lead the Bills. Seattle blowing out the Steelers, who've had their injury problems. Now we'll take a look at the finals. The Bears win. So do the Skins, beating the buddy Ryan Philadelphia Eagles badly on opening day. Houston under new coach Jerry Glanville with a very impressive opening win over favorite Green Bay. First down, Denver with 12-21 to play in the game, and the L.A. Raiders leading 36-31. to Now suddenly Dan Reeves, confidence in his offense, back to the standard bread-and-butter plays. Trying to control that line of scrimmage a little bit, take the pass rush of the, the Raiders out of the football game. This is their running pair now, Lang and Winder. Interesting, all those throws and no interceptions either way today. Again, they bang the ball to the Raider defense. Going with the run, Sammy Winder takes it straight down to the 31-yard line. And a first down carry, he got a couple. Reggie McKenzie and Rod Martin, two of the Raider linebackers, made the stop. Game clock running, 11.43 to play. Raiders 36, Broncos 31. Let's watch this set. They have two tight ends. And Steve Sewell in the backfield. The lone setback, I believe. He'd be nice on a swing pass here. They have two tight ends, two wide receivers, and Sewell in the backfield. A lot they can do from here. Watson comes in motion. He's the possession receiver. That's the Sewell. Guy. Swing pass. And Sewell is all the way down to the 19-yard line. Have a first down and they'll get more as a penalty marker comes in on Los Angeles. Excellent, hit. excellent block by Keith Bishop out there in front of him, Don. Personal foul. Los Angeles Raiders. You could see what they were doing when they brought Watson in motion. They got everybody compacted in there with the two tight ends. There's nobody out there. They try to scrape everybody off. Elway does a good job of looking well, down the field. There's the block by Bishop on McKenzie. Sewell does a great job of running the ball. Let's see where the penalty is. I think they call it on Mike Keynes. 22 piling on late. Not very smart. Sewell is a rangy back. Grew up in San Francisco and followed the Raiders. It's a young man before going to Oklahoma. He can play anywhere. Running back, wide receiver, he can even quarterback. He's that good an athlete. Out of Oklahoma, the number one draft choice a year ago. Now Winder takes it straight ahead. Raiders give yardage grudgingly. Yeah, Patel the shot the gap and made the hit. Here we go again. Ten minutes and 35 seconds to play in the game. Raiders 36, Broncos 31. As we pointed out earlier in the game, Trump, since the league went to the 16-game schedule in 1978, the winners on opening day figured to have twice the chance of going to the playoffs as the losers on opening day. And in this particular series, since 1978, one team has been swept. 
Denver in 78, 81, and 84 swept the Raiders. The Raiders swept in 79, 80, 83 in last year. Second down. Elway on the spread out. Looks at Gene Lang. He's not open. Now a man is in the wide open was Mark Jackson, but Elway didn't see him as he went to the short receiver. Jackson, the rookie from Purdue, comes sprinting back to tell Elway, I Don't will do that, my man. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you're a rookie receiver, go back in the huddle and just whisper to him, I was open. I'm not good at calling plays, but with the ability of John Elway, if I had a quarterback draw in and I were Dan Reeves, I'd call it right here. A quarterback draw. I think it would work. Third down. 9.55 to play. Well, it won't be a quarterback draw. You can't run it from the shotgun. That's the right thing to say just before you play him. Lang. Oh, the catch. Touchdown. Gene Lang is in. Elway rockets the ball between defenders and the Denver Broncos take the lead. 37 to 36. Seven yards on the catch. Don, somehow, all day long, Denver has gotten it done. I mean, there's nothing to really scream about for Denver in this football game, but they've managed to get it done. A turnover, several penalties. And Trump, this is the first time since the opening drive when the Broncos scored on the Elway throw that the Broncos have led the game. They've led 7-0, fell behind 19-7. Now they have a 37 to 36 lead. It's like the old American Football League. Extra point is good. The Raiders trail by two. Most exciting thing in Raider football over the years. The last two minutes were still got a long way to go. Napoleon McCallum takes the kickoff at the eight. He's to the 15 yard line. He's across the 20 and out to the 26 yard line. You remember his last carry resulted in an expensive fumble. Now back to NFL 86. Don, the Jets and Bills can't match your game there for thrills, but they've had their moments. Take this 71-yard catch and run by the veteran Wesley Walker from the Ken O'Brien pass, and with just over five minutes to play, the Jets are now in front of the Bills. 28-17, back to mile high. Thank you, Bob. Jim Kelly can't play defense. That's a very big, auspicious beginning for Mr. Kelly. Wasn't even decided if he was going to start, was it? No, I didn't. Mark Wilson has some big numbers for the Raiders, 11 of 19 for 231 yards and three touchdowns. 9.40 to go, a load of time left. Marcus Allen is across the 30 on a first down catch. Gain good for six yards for the Raiders. Cragen right in there on the feet of Mark Wilson, pressuring him. You see Mark Wilson looking to the sideline. A real change in posture for the Los Angeles Raiders. Tom Flores now calls the place for Mark Wilson. Historically, Raider quarterbacks have always called their own. Marcus Allen has cut four passes for 62 yards. He's rushed 20 times for 81 more. Second and four, Marcus Allen. First down, Raiders. Free ball, but it's knocked out of bounds. A thunderous hit put on him. And the ball shot free, as you saw. But the Raiders maintain possession and get four new downs to work with. 8.55 to play. Clock stop, fourth quarter, as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Auto's News Channel, KCNC TV, Denver. Incidentally, Jim Kelly's 18 for 31 today for 261 yards for Buffalo. I got a stat for you on Marcus Allen. In 1985, when Allen rushed 20 times or more, the Raiders record, 12 and 1. Raiders down by two, fourth quarter. Swing pass to Marcus Allen in open field. A dancer and a diver, Marcus Allen loses tacklers and gets ahead for yet another first down. A 13-yard gain on the play. As we check the 10-minute ticker. Jets now in command at Buffalo, it would seem, late in that game, an 11-point lead. And San Diego with an embarrassment that seldom heaped on the Miami Dolphins. Seattle laying waste to the Steelers on opening day. New England doing the same to the Colts. 
What a game here in Denver. Lots of points, and it's two points separating the two teams. You're going to keep seeing Mark Allen here, Don. Any way they can get in the ball. The more he gets it, the more he likes it. Here comes Marcus Allen again, but he's cut down. Coming up to make the play was Greg Cragen, a nose tackle. From Utah State in his second year. One of the things the Raiders would like to do is de-emphasize Marcus Allen a little in their offense this year. He had 380 carries last season. Uh, excuse me, th yeah, 380 regular season carries last year. They'd like to de-emphasize him a little bit. But in this situation, 7.38 to go behind fourth quarter, he's the money man for the Raiders. He kills, and the Raiders have deep speed on either flank as Wilson drops the throw. He's looking at Doki Williams. The ball is tipped and incomplete. That was great. Slipped off the hands of tight end Todd Christensen, who thinks he was fouled. That was great coverage by Dennis Smith. Outstanding coverage by Dennis Smith. Tight ends, having been one for a number of years, you try to, try to win these battles of the shoves right at the break. And Dennis Smith, playing with that broken collarbone, Right with Christensen. Good second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports, George Finkel. Our director, Richard Klein. Executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. Is on opening day in Denver. We've got big numbers on the board. 38-36. The Broncos taking the lead in the fourth quarter. Wilson loops it. It goes to no one. Making the play on the ball was Denver defensive back Mike Harden. Rulon Jones was smoking in on Mark Wilson. Now the Raiders have to punt. Ken Woodard right in Wilson's face. You see Dennis Smith also on the blitz. Christensen loses his feet. And the Denver defense has done it. Stop the Raiders. An awful lot of time left. An awful lot of time left for a team that has not run the ball particularly well for Denver today. They're still not out of jeopardy. And over the years, nobody plays beat the clock better than the Raiders. Shank punt, but it actually turns out to be a good one as Ray Guy angles the ball out of bounds. And gender fans came alive. Looked like it was going to carry short. 37-yard punt, but it's out of bounds at the nine. Cleaver, did you send those galoshes to Cleveland? They didn't get there. Yes, but... Rising up from sold out Mile High Stadium as the Denver Broncos start this drive deep in their own end at their nine yard line. The game clock shows 7 12 to play. The Denver Broncos holding to a 38 to 36 lead over the Los Angeles Raiders. Lone setback behind John Elway. Coming out of the backfield is Sewell, and Elway's behind him with the throw. So it'll be second down and ten. On the Denver Broncos, basically go with are going now with seven offensive linemen. They got two tight ends, both way in excess of 250. And in that particular snap, you saw the Raiders come with what the Bears made famous at 46 defense. They sink their three defensive linemen down inside, stop the traps and the lead blocks up front, and put two. Linebackers on one side, two safeties on the other side. The Raiders beat the Broncos twice last year. Both meetings and both were decided in overtime. Now the Broncos deep in their old end, holding to a two-point lead, trying to get new down to get some time to run the clock. On second and ten, the run takes the ball out to the 15-yard line. Gene Lang from LSU on a straight-ahead power dive. Rod Martin on the knockdown. Watch the job they do. Billy Bryan, 64. Great job on 71. Piquel, Matt Millen gets turned around a little bit. Nice hole by the Denver offensive line for Lang to get up through there. Game clock running. 6.40 to play and ticking. 38-36. The Broncos lead the game after they trailed early by 12 points. What do you do here? I think you give it to Wilhite on a sweep. Now they're going to throw. Will Elway I... takes a look. Incomplete, and the Broncos have to punt it. The Raiders should get very good field position with 6.22 to play. That's on Elway. One of the few bad passes he's thrown today. One of the things they're trying to teach John to do is to take something off of the ball 
on those short receptions. Will Height was open, and he underthrew him. A much younger Los Angeles Raider team. All the veterans that retired or were waived, like Alzado and Dave Dalby. And there's 125 years less NFL experience on this Raider team than there was a season ago, but there's more speed. We saw that speed in evidence earlier when Rod Barksdale, the rookie wide receiver, was on the payoff end of a 57-yard touchdown throw by Wilson. Now punt by Wheeler, Wild downfield, and it's McCallum going to bring it back again as Wheels' punt was fielded at the 44, a 38-yard punt. The return just one yard. Next Sunday, our coverage of the 1986 baseball season next Saturday continues. Be sure to join us as the American League Eastern Division race heats up. The Boston Red Sox travel to the Big Apple to play the Yankees. Or you'll see the Dodgers host the Cincinnati Reds. The action gets underway at 3 o'clock Eastern time with Major League Baseball an inside look. That's next Saturday on NBC Sports. Unfortunately for the Denver Bronco defense, not much of a rest there. Three plays and out by the Denver Bronco offense. And once again, they've got to respond to the challenge here. Loop pass to Christensen is incomplete at the 35-yard line. Dennis Smith, number 49, who's playing with a fractured bone in his shoulder, came up and put the hit on. Once again, the rollout that worked so well in the second quarter that produced a touchdown. There's Mecklenburg in coverage. Christensen has a good sense of the field. Watch this hit. Smith, that left shoulder heavily padded with the broken bone on his shoulder anywhere. <laughs> that would be a problem. <laughs> Caving in your chest, yeah. Rod Barksdale was wide open on that last play deep. He's on the near flank of the lower portion of your screen, the rookie. Wilson takes a look, throws the ball. It's caught by Marcus Allen, and he's cut down at the... 39-yard line of the Broncos. It's a first down. Clock running. 5.50 to play, as you see. 14-yard gain for the Raiders and a first down for Los Angeles. Dennis Smith also said in an article concerning Marcus Allen in Sports Illustrated that whenever they play the Raiders, no matter what their game plan is, you've always got to look at Marcus Allen at the end of the half, the end of the game, one of the best money players you can find in the NFL. They're looking at him. Marcus Allen's numbers increasing. Six receptions for 99 yards. Run the ball 22 times for 90 more. Marcus Allen slides by one tackler and gets ahead for three on a first down carry to the 36-yard line of Denver. Ricky Hunley got him. As we check the scoreboard, now the Bills put up another touchdown, and they're back to within four of the Jets. The embarrassment continues for the Dolphins at San Diego where they trail 50 to 21. Seattle laying waste to Pittsburgh. New England has now defeated Indianapolis by a 30 point margin. That's Rick Hundley down on the field, Don. He may be just uh, getting a breather. He's covered uh, kicks today. He's also been on the kickoff return team. He's the guy who made the tackle on Marcus Allen. You can see he's out of breath, too. Huntley was originally drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals a year ago in the 85 draft. They couldn't sign him, traded him to Denver where he got the numbers are right. Most unbelievable linebacker contract. It's got to be more than Lawrence Taylor. Got a million seven signing bonus. I don't like to talk about him. It hurts, huh? Yes, it does. Next Sunday, the NFL goes to week number two, and the action gets underway at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL 86. Then it's on to some great matchups. The Chargers meet the Giants in New Jersey. The Raiders have a tough second week game. They go to play the Redskins at Washington today. The Redskins blew out. Buddy Ryan and his Philadelphia Eagles. Buffalo at Cincinnati. In the second games, included on them, Kansas City at Seattle, and Indianapolis goes to Miami. Blitz. Wilson dumps it off, and Christensen somehow catches the ball. He's short of the first down. Boy, that's, not by a lot. That is a great play by Mark Wilson. Rulon Jones after him. Darren Como after him. Throws back across his body. Wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. Watch the pressure he eludes. Now, this guy is supposed to be immobile at 6'6", 205. He may look like a crane out there, but 
and he gets it done. Rod uh, Christensen builds up his numbers and his production for the Raiders. A man who came to them as a free agent in 79. He's caught six for 76 yards and a touchdown. Marcus Allen thundering into the defense of the Denver Broncos. Gets a first down inside the 29-yard line. He's down to the 27. The game clock ticks. Four new downs for the Raiders. Four minutes to play in the game. Raiders trail by two. Now this is where Joe Collier and the Denver defense has to do something crazy. I mean, they're... The Raiders are only down by two, as you said, so a field goal wins the game for them, at least puts them up. Now is when you got to come with your blitzes. Now is when you got to give them your real different looks. And Collier generally has been very good at that. See him jumping, 10, Los Angeles. See him jumping in and out of the defensive line, Don? Wilson. Rulon Jones coming open, receiver. Down with the ball, down to the 11-yard line. Broncos have the football. Don't Barksdale play. caught it and lost it. Rod Barksdale, the rookie track man, caught it and lost it, and the Broncos get it back with 324 to play and Denver holding to a two-point lead. Now he didn't catch that ball cleanly. Watch at the end of this. He kind of fumbles a little bit when it hits his hands. Actually, it's Doki Williams. Doki had Williams to... had the ball. Barksdale comes in trying to recover. Doki Williams lost it. Rick Dennison freed the ball. Dennis Smith recovered out fighting Barksdale for the ball. How so many? It was Doki Williams who lost the ball after he caught it. And now the Broncos get it back at their 10-yard line. Catch and fumble. First down, Denver. The replay official did look at it, agreed with us. How many times have we seen this Denver defense come up with the timely big turnover? Final from San Diego, the Chargers route the Dolphins 50 to 28. Don Strzok was in at the end for Miami at quarterback. Nothing happening there for Gene Lang, and finally he works his way back close to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 11. He lost a yard. Jerry Robinson, an outside linebacker, ran him down along with Reggie McKenzie. 3.09 to play, and that's the game clock ticking down. Denver still not out of trouble here with the inability to consistently run the ball today. You don't want to have to throw it here. Any penalties in the end zone as the quarterback drop back, drops back to throw. That's a safety. And there's still a lot of jeopardy here. Second and 11 for Elway and the Broncos. They lead by two in the fourth quarter. Open now. Mark Jackson and he has a first down for the Broncos. 13 yard gain. Lester Hayes in coverage. He's got good time. Excellent protection by the offensive line. Looking around the field which is part of the maturity of a John Elway. You see the cushion between Hayes and Jackson. That's an easy first down pickup. Now they got a little breathing room. Jim Kelly had a spectacular day but came up a bit short in his debut for Buffalo as the Jets held on to win 28 to 24. End off as the Broncos go to the run and on a first down carry Gene Lang runs the ball Matt Millen and Reggie McKenzie stop him. Now the, the Raiders should start taking timeouts. They got to start taking timeouts here. Defense can call the timeouts then the offense can get timeouts by throwing the ball out of bounds and all kinds of things. 2.20 to play, and the L.A. Raiders call timeout as the Broncos will have second down and seven coming up. Denver trying to run down the clock, and the Raiders trying to get it back. They're within the field goal of possible victory if they can get it back and run the clock. Don, big difference for the Denver Broncos this week. Last week turned the ball over, what was it, six times? Today, just once. And they've gotten three turnovers from the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. That's been a big factor in the football game. That and some very, very dumb penalties, in my estimation, taken by the Los Angeles Raiders. You can only try to intimidate a team for so long, and then it hurts you as opposed to helping you. No matter how many times you see them over the years, you can't help but marvel at the Raiders and their ability to come back when seemingly they're gone. 
2.20 to play. Broncos holding to a 38-36 lead as Elway comes back out. John Elway today has put the ball up 34 times. He has completed 20 for 203 yards and two touchdowns. He's not been intercepted. Second down. Broncos need seven. Sammy Winder lost four. Big Sean Jones, a defensive end 99, swept in, cut him off, made the knockdown as the game ticks down to the two-minute warning. I hope they take a timeout here. They got another timeout for the two-minute warning, and they don't. Very important part of the Bronco offense. Sideline for the second half. Vance Johnson, their second-year receiver and returner, went out with a knee injury. We don't know how serious it is, but he's not played in the second half. Move down a little bit, if you will. See if he's got some ice or something on his knee, no? Two minutes to play in the game. The Raiders in white, trailing by two points. They led by one at the half, extended their lead a couple of times to eight in the second half. The Broncos kept coming back, and finally Denver took the lead, 38-36, capitalizing after a Napoleon McCallum fumble of a return. Then they ran it in, finally got in on the payoff end. The throw by Elway to Gene Lang was the go-ahead points. Do you throw it here, Don, or do you, you, you run it? Hope your defense can stop him again. I think you throw it. Elway looks, going long. Watson's going for the ball. He catches it at the 43-yard line of Los Angeles. Goody ball. 36-yard gain on third and 10. Lester Hayes, bump and run coverage. Good pass protection once again by the Broncos offensive line. Perfectly thrown. Hayes can't reach it. Watson's made two monster catches today. One for a touchdown, and now that one. Block running, a minute 20 to go. The Raiders waiting. Raiders have two timeouts remaining. Denver has all three, but the last thing the Broncos want to do is stop the clock now. Let's see what the Raiders do. Broncos huddling at their leisure. Now Denver calls a timeout with 64 ticks left in the game. 38-36, Denver back after this. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. The Denver Broncos have the ball in a two-point lead, a 36-yard throw on third and 10. Elway just hit Steve Watson, and now the Broncos will try to run the clock. They keep it away from the Raiders as they try to get it back and go for the winning field goal. Penalty marker as Sammy Winder gets to the line of scrimmage and the clock stops with a minute to play on the marker. Kansas City has defeated Cincinnati 24 to 14. New England has beaten Indianapolis 33 to 3. Filling the motion, two men were moving, is declined. Second down. Flores now sees the second and ten play coming up. Second and ten as the Raiders decline. No gain on the play. Our formation. Three tight ends in the game for the Broncos. And motion is Clarence KED. I set in the backfield. Second back is Winder. He hits ahead and gets to the 39-yard line. Raiders call a timeout. They have one left with 55 seconds to play. A most important play coming up now. It's a third down coming up for the Denver Broncos, and they'll have about seven. Stay with the same kind of offense, Don. Just run it in the line of scrimmage. Let the uh, Raiders use their last timeout. For all armchair quarterbacks, they're out of field goal range. It would be a 57-yarder if they no. kicked it from this spot. No. I think Elway's going to throw it. I disagree with you. I think they'll take their chances bigger than... 
I would never take my chances against the Raiders with 50 seconds left if they take. Well, they would have a chance to punt it also. Sure. They're, they're all going to find out. Only mm -hmm. Coach Reeves and Elway know at the moment. All right, I'll put it to you. No, there's no way you throw it. You just dive it into the middle. Let them make the choice. They're going to take a timeout, and you go out there and punt the ball. Just try to get it up in the air. Make them lose their last timeout. Make them lose their last timeout. Now they, and then the Raider offense must use the sideline. You got to pretty much take away the center of the field. If Ken Stabler were the quarterback, then I'd be a little more worried. Now we're going to find out right now with 55 seconds to play in Denver, leading 38 to 36. They do go to the run. Here comes Winder as the Raiders shut it down and knock down for no gain. It's fourth down and eighth. And the Raiders use their last timeout with 49 seconds to play. Fourth down coming up. And the putter's coming out. Jack Wheel. Now the most important man in this play is the snapper. And that's Keith Bishop, who is a very accurate snapper. You don't care if you make the tackle. You don't care about anything. You want to make sure that the snap to the center is good. There you see, 54. Bishop is very accurate. Good, hard, long snapper. Wheel's got to reminding him, be reminding himself, catch the ball. He'll go to the sideline. He's talking to the punting coach. He says, look, if anything happens, if it's a bad snap, don't try to pick the ball up. Get on the ball. Maintain possession. Those, those are the things that coaches tell young men when they start their careers. Because the worst thing that could happen here is there's a bad snap and he tries to turn it into a punt. Just get on the ball, let the Raiders take over. Best thing about Raider football over the years, the last two minutes, they won't have two minutes to work with now. Los Angeles trailing Denver 38 to 36. Napoleon McCallum drops back to look for the punt from Jack Wheel. They're going to be coming after him, Don. Forty nine kicks left the clock starts here is a kick into the end zone so it'll come out to the 20 and the Raiders will go on offense first and 10 at their 20 yard line with 42 seconds left. They have to get in field goal range in that time with no timeouts. Now, earlier in the ball game we saw Denver go with seven defensive backs. Let's count them one two three four five. I see six in the ball game right now. Now, if you're the Los Angeles Raiders, you don't fight for inches here. You try to save seconds. Any catch, get out of bounds. There'll be a couple of automatic plays called. If there's a completion, everybody goes to the line of scrimmage. The Broncos will be trying to keep them inbounds, fighting for inches, and hopefully expend seconds. Wilson throws it is almost intercepted. Linebacker Ken Woodard, who you remember earlier, picked up a fumble and ran it in 12 yards for one of the Denver scores. Had his hands on it, that would have sealed it. He might have gone in. But it's just an incomplete pass, and now it's second down and 10 for the Raiders. Broncos playing total zone. Probably good that Christensen didn't catch that pass. Might have taken 20 seconds off the clock. You can't throw the ball to the inside of the field with 37 seconds to go and no timeouts. No timeouts for the Raiders, who trail by two with 35 seconds to play. Another throw lateral. to Christensen. A lateral to Marcus Allen. He hits to the sideline. The hook and ladder made famous by the Miami Dolphins in that overtime game with the San Diego Chargers. And that one was good for 23 yards, and Marcus Allen additionally got out of bounds to stop the clock with 28 seconds to play. Still heads-up play by the Denver Bronco defense. Catch, lateral. Steve Foley is able to get out there. And Randy uh, Dennis Smith able to get him out of bounds. Chris Barr, the Raider place kicker, is not a long-range bomber. they got to get it down a lot farther. Ball at the 43. Clock starts, 25 seconds. They go to Frank Hawkins up the middle, and now the Raiders have to run into formation without a huddle as the green clock is ticking. 19, 18, you see it winding down. That's all the left. They're powerless to stop the clock. A quick throw by Wilson, an incomplete ball, stops the clock, as you see, with 12 seconds to play. Now most coaches say, give me six seconds to get my field goal team on the field. There's no doubt that this pass has got to go to the outside. If it goes to the inside, 
There's no way the Raiders can run another play. Certain advantage to the Denver Broncos. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they try to run the hook and lateral to the other side. It worked. You get Allen running straight out of bounds. It's at the 45. I'd say they need 10 yards. 35, 45. They're thinking about a 52-yard attempt. seconds left a sack at the 42 yard line and now third down comes up for the Raiders now the Raiders got to assemble get to the line of scrimmage now the clock is wound clock is ticking three two one and out for the Raiders on opening day no play the Denver Broncos come from behind in the fourth quarter to win the game 38 to 36. That took some years off of Dan Reeves' life. Many more like that. He'll leave the field in a wheelchair. <laughs> Great sport that he is. Tom Flores comes over to congratulate him. The final number, 38-36, Denver.